played, and there was a lot of intensity, and it was an exciting game. You had a lot of uh, defensive turnovers caused in the game, and that definitely had to help, too. Helped a lot, and, and there were some big plays on the offensive mm -hmm. side of the ball that probably the score, at least maybe the first half, might not be totally realistic of the game. But it was kind of an unusual game, John, in the sense that, that like the second half, there were only five possessions. We had three, and they had Jeez. two, and 30 minutes were gone. And, it just indicates that the teams were able to put together some long drives. Mm -hmm. But that first half especially, your defense played well. They might drive, get a couple first downs, and there was always a turnover or they got stopped. That's right. And, of course, it starts out early in the game when Rusty Conrad makes a key interception, mm -hmm. which I imagine we'll see. And that kind of set the tempo. Then a little bit later on, we come back with a fumble recovery. And we're able to, you know, put a field goal <laughs> in on the first turnover, a touchdown on the second turnover. And those are big plays when you can get them. And they really do help your momentum a great deal. Have you noticed any specific changes in your defense? Because it seems like as the years progress, they've been playing a little bit better. Well, John, we made uh, quite a few changes for <coughs> Missouri Western because they were an option football team, and we mm -hmm. played them differently than we played uh, Pittsburgh, although they're not the same kind of team as Pittsburgh State. But we tried to involve our free safety a lot more right. and run support. And really, if, uh, if you watch the game, you know, it'll be replayed a little bit later on. I think you'll see number 11, Danny yeah. Gall, involved on lots of plays, very close to the line of scrimmage. We felt like he had to do this if we were going to have a success uh, game plan as far as our defense was concerned. Do you feel like when you take one of your defensive backs and commit him to the run, is that taking a risk against a pass? Well, not really, John, because he has some very certain keys that he has to read, and mm -hmm. he can, you know, read the, uh, sometimes we read the uncovered offensive lineman, and if he sees pass block, he's not going to come up. If he sees run block, then he's going to force real quick. And from time to time, you can get burned, but the more experience you get, the better you get at reading that, and then very seldom will you really be out of position. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned experience. This might be a little off of what you had in mind, but you have some young linebackers playing, and they're certainly gaining experience now. Well, you know, that game started out. We played Bobby Joe Russell, who's mm -hmm. a freshman linebacker from Texas, as one of our linebackers. Scott Kovar was in the game at the other, and then Bobby Joe unfortunately got hurt part way through the game, and he'll miss this week's game with Wayne. So right now, all three of our freshman <coughs> linebackers that were playing a great deal, Dave Collin, Greg Ash, and Bobby Joe Russell, are injured. And the only one of the four that has been at the varsity is John Rose from Texas, mm -hmm. and he's still playing, and I hope he can stay healthy. Do you think that's going to cause any extra problems, or do you expect the freshmen to handle it? Well, I think that at this point in time, you know, nine games into the season, you really can't look at them as freshmen mm -hmm. anymore. They've had lots and lots of practices, and they ought to be able to perform at a higher level than what a normal freshman would. And I think that they'll give a good accounting of themselves. Uh, right now, it looks like the, the bulk of the linebacking core this week will fall on Troy Schubert and Darren mm -hmm. Gunn's shoulders, along with John Rose. And I think they'll do an excellent job. Another aspect of last week's game, your place kicker kicked a long field goal, and that had to help right off. Well, Darren, you know, he got the long field goal, but he also got two others. He mm -hmm. was three for three, and that ought to boost his confidence a great deal, too. We've talked about Darren a lot in, as the, in the other weeks, and, and I think he's just showing more poise all the time. And Darren's an excellent athlete, and, and maybe eventually, uh, perhaps by next fall, he might be playing another position as well as, mm -hmm. as kicking. Now, we'll turn and look at the offense just a little bit. They definitely got some breaks from the defense, but it seems like they're playing a little bit more consistently. Well, I thought we did a little better job, especially <coughs> the second half in terms of the running. We didn't run the ball nearly as well as I'd like to have seen us do at the first half, but we did come up with some big plays, mm -hmm. and of course they all count. The second half we came out and we put together three sustained drives and ended up with, you know, I think two field goals in those drives. We didn't score any touchdowns, but uh, we were able to put some more points on the board. and. And, I, you know, we need to do that this week against Wayne. We need to have some really good ball control mm -hmm. because, you know, they're kind of an explosive team, even though they haven't scored a lot of points recently. Uh, they can move the ball. And, and one, of the, one of the goals that we have, John, is to try to protect our defense, try to keep them on the sideline as much as we can. And to do that, you need to have some long drives from your offense. So we can do better in that area, but we were better this mm -hmm. past Saturday. A play I'd like to talk to you about is that little counterplay to Travis Valine that seems to be working. Is that something you work on quite a bit during the well, week? Well, it's a play, John, that we've had in since, I guess, Tuesday of our first two-a-day practices, so we've <laughs> had it in a lot. And we have that play set up so that not only can our slot back or our wide receiver run the play, but our tailback runs mm -hmm. it a lot also. And it's a very popular play throughout the United States. I think probably just about every team runs some variation of that kind of a reverse, but it has been good to us. I think you'll see in the highlights that you were able to run that three or four times for positive yardage every time. And in, the, in past games, maybe it hasn't worked quite as well. Well, not really. I think a lot of that has to do with the defense that you play mm -hmm. uh, against. Uh, Scott Meyer had an excellent <coughs> run off yeah. the reverse also and broke a tackle and scored a touchdown, but it was called back due to a holding penalty. But I hope it can remain real productive for us. I hope it can really be productive this Saturday.
Another aspect on the offense, Gary Hurt threw a couple touchdown passes to Doug Banks, who continues to play well. Yeah, Doug Banks has had a tremendous year for mm -hmm. us, and he, you know, he's such a great competitor and a fine young man, and I'm really happy that he can have the kind of success that he's having. Uh, Gary was on target for some touchdown passes, maybe missed some other passes that he would like to have, have stuck in there, but you know, Gary has a good knowledge of the game plan, and, and a couple of those passes that he went to were automatics, so one to Paul Riley for a pretty good size gain, and I think that just shows his leadership and his effort expertise as far as the game is concerned too. Do you feel like as he's been getting more playing time that he's been improving? Well, I, th I think that anybody that gets to play a lot will get better. Mm -hmm. I just feel like that, that without question will take place. You know, one other thing I think we should mention, John, is that our, our quarterback had excellent protection again. Mm -hmm. He really wasn't rushed in terms of throwing the ball. And here we've gone through nine ball games and we've only had, I think, six sacks with our quarterback. And that's really quite a phenomenal record. Maybe as long as we're talking about that offensive line, I know they don't get a lot of credit, but you might want to name off who you have playing there. Well, right now we have Brian Casper, who's a senior from Hildreth, who's a center, Wade Robinson at right tackle, who's a senior from Bertrand. Uh, we have Keith Hauser, who's the, the right guard, who's a senior from Central City. And then at the, at the left guard spot, Dennis Faze from Omaha has been starting. He's mm -hmm. a junior. And at the left tackle spot, Scott Billicum, who's also a junior. And then Tim McCaw from Omaha South will fill in uh, at, at the guard spot, and then Paul Mundell will fill in to tackle. So we all will have some good experience coming back, but we're losing some good senior leadership mm -hmm. there and, and people that have a lot of expertise and can make the necessary line calls. Another key player that you've had back after an early injury is Paul Riley, and he continues to play well. And Paul is, is also a senior from Spalding, Nebraska, and, and you know, for having played in no more games than he has actually played, and he missed the first three, mm -hmm. uh, I think he's very close to 30 receptions, and, and he has, you know, two or three, four touchdowns. I can't remember the exact number, but he's made a lot of big plays, and he's meant a lot to our offense, especially the passing game, and his run blocking has improved dramatically the last three weeks. And you've got that many weapons offensively. Is it hard for you as a coach to try to set up some kind of a game plan where you involve everybody? Well, not really, because we kind of substitute by formations, and we the, 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 the players have kind of developed their own little signals as to who's to be in and who isn't to be in. But when we're going to be in a pro set, we like to have Travis Belaine and Doug Banks in. Uh -huh. And when we're going to be in a slot formation, then we want to have Scott Meyer or Ryan Sis in at the slot. And so they kind of know when they have to go in, and I call the formation, and they take care of the rest in terms of getting the right players in. <laughs> So it definitely looks like it's up to your players. They've got to have some smarts, too, to keep up with what's going well, on. Well, they got to know it, but that we rehearse that on the practice field all the time, so uh -huh. it's not like it's something that you don't work on. Uh, we practice on Thursday nights. We have a game rehearsal, and we were on the sideline. We call the formations, and then the necessary players will be in there. You mentioned how you've only given up six sacks, and your defensive line has forced a lot of problems for opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, we, I think our giveaway-takeaway ratio, in other words, when we say giveaway, the number of fumbles and interceptions that mm -hmm. we've had compared to the, the number of, of interceptions and fumbles that our opponents have given up, we're on the plus side. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really attributed to uh, our, the good play of our down four, and then our linebackers and our secondary coming up with some big plays breaking on the ball. Now, we've talked about your secondary a little bit and named off some of the linebackers, but the defensive line, seems to me, they put a lot of pressure on. Well, they really have. And, you know, Jeff Essman and, and Todd Gransky and Chuck Acker at defensive end, uh, uh, Kirk Messer and Scott Yonke in at defensive tackle, and I know I probably left somebody out. But they've done a nice job. They, mm -hmm. they put a lot of pressure on them. And they, and we don't, you generally only rush four people. And occasionally we'll come with, with a little bit more than that, but they have done an excellent job. Do you feel like those four people alone, that adds that you can have your defensive linebackers and secondary all back in the secondary covering passes? Well, I think you can, John, if you got somebody that can really put the pressure on. Mm -hmm. And Todd Gransky, I have no idea how many sacks he's had for <laughs> sure. I know he has a lot, but he's the kind of young man that, that sometimes makes people figure out that maybe they better block him with two men. And anytime you do that, then somebody else is single blocked, and you'd expect them to make some mm -hmm. big plays. Okay, after this short break, we'll be back to take a look at some footage from last week's ball game. Tell you about a dream that I have every night. In the service, I was the best mechanic around. So when I got out, it was easy to find the job. There was one thing I couldn't find in civilian life. So I joined the Army National Guard. Now I still work at the garage full time. But two days a month, and two weeks a year, I take on something a little faster.
don't get me wrong. I like working on cars. But sometimes, I'd rather drive. Welcome back, and as promised now, we'll take a look at some of that footage. A good game for you, both offensively and defensively. really was. And as I said earlier, it turned out to be a beautiful day after having some, some cold weather early. We did a nice job on the early kickoffs there, Matt Acromis, and I think Mike Arnold was, was in on that tackle. We make him start from behind the 20-yard line, get a good force there. There's Danny Gall mm -hmm. uh, in on the tackle, Kevin Lyons, number five, Scott Yonke, 44 there. Then the fine interception right here by Rusty Conrad. A great break on the ball. We have the ball on the 29, and this is when the offense got to take the field with, you know, a killer instinct. Uh -huh. And we came up with a play here that we thought were com was complete. Uh, it was a third down play to Paul Riley, but he didn't really protest, so apparently uh, they, the, he didn't really feel like he had the ball either. And then Darren Garholtz comes in and kicks a field goal in. It was a, about a 41-yard field goal, so that was uh -huh. a good start. They come off and, you know, they rip off a good run here. And again, you probably see Danny Gall in on that tackle. They uh, came back in with a pass that they have downfield and the guy's wide open and he drops the ball. And obviously it'd be one that they would like to have had. And had they had it, it probably would have changed the complexion of the game a great deal. And here they cross their two tight ends and he's wide open and, and uh, Danny Gall and again Kevin Lyons are in on that tackle. So they're moving the football on us right here. They have a, you know, a lot of versatility in their offense. There's a sack by Todd Gransky. They also got called for holding. Mm -hmm. uh, that just you know, indicates what we talked about earlier, the, the pressure he can put on. And this is Chuck Mosley with a, with a good run up inside. And then we come back with the reverse. And it was blocked very well, but they grab his arm. The ball's gone, and they get it. So our defense is back on the field, and they got to make the sudden change now. And we stuffed the little cutback dive with, with most of our players there. And he is forced to punt. We were playing safe here. We thought probably they might try to fake it, and yet they chose to kick it, and it went out on about the eight-yard line. Mm -hmm. So we have to start deep in our own territory. And this is an excellent run. This was a third down play, and Trevor Pavich comes off on a draw play, and we get the first down. And eventually we are forced to kick, and uh, kind of a short kick, but we're going to get a good bounce. And Scott Meyer is there guarding it, and, as well as Paul Riley, and bleed it for all we can get. <laughs> And here's the fumble that we talked about. We get great pressure mm -hmm. on him early, Jeff Essman, 88, and then Bobby Joe Russell ended up on top of the football. And that's a great opportunity. So we, this is the reverse that we talked about with Travis Belaine. You can get some idea of his speed. Wade Robinson's out there in front. He makes a great cut and then just really runs by that guy. And we stick it in the end zone. That's a big, big, big touchdown at this point in time. We had a lot of respect for Missouri mm -hmm. Western's program. We, we knew that they could move the football, so every point you can get is, is critical. A great play right there in terms of breaking up the ball. I think that probably was that was Kevin Lyons, and they called us, I guess, for pass yeah. interference there. You can see now the quarterback, you know, came off of the option play. Danny Gall filled and made the tackle. And they come with a reverse on a fourth down play, and they mishandle it. But we, I think, had it pretty well covered yeah. anyway. I think it had been real difficult for them to have done a lot with that. And we come back with the reverse boot and complete the pass to Paul Riley, get a good first down. Here's another reverse with Scott Meyer, similar to the one that Travis Belene just ran for about seven yards. And a sprint out pass, and he goes up inside uh, to Paul Riley and makes a nice catch. Really, the guy was all over him. And then we run a, a reverse, and this didn't make Good a luck. lot of yards, but it was a big hit there yeah. by Scott <laughs> Billicum. Their free safety filled really well and was able to put a stop to it. We came with a pass on the outside, uh, and, and it's called the dash pass, and we hit Doug Banks in the middle, and he takes it into the end zone. We said before, Doug has excellent quickness, and if he can get a step, I think people will have a hard time catching him. This was a, a high snap, and Russ Harvey felt like he couldn't get it back down on the pad, so he ran it in, and they chose not to give it to him. It looked like he might have yeah. been in. It's a nice run by their freshman quarterback. I think Missouri Western has a lot of good young players, and they'll definitely be a team to be reckoned with in the future. A nice fill in there by Jeff Essman on the option, and they have to kick the ball away. <clears throat> we had some good punt returns in this game. We, we, we did some good things in that phase of it. Here, Doug Banks is going to come up with a good return. He makes some people miss him. And we are going to have great field position after you get a return like that. Mm -hmm. 
We're right back in business on the 38-yard line. <clears throat> we came with a little reverse play that they played well. Uh, we uh, were not unable to make very many yards on that play. And then there's a little difty doodle, which <laughs> is a flanker around, lateral back to the quarterback, who throws the, the long pass down to Doug Banks. And, was a touchdown. It's one of those plays that when it when it works, you look great, and when it doesn't work, you you know you wonder why you called it. But uh, it, it was a good play, and it just happened to work out for us at that time. This wasn't meant to be a squib kick. We kind of missed it off the tee there a little bit, but we did a nice job of covering. They're throwing the ball actually a little bit more than they threw it in some of their other games. And again, that was a tight end on a crossing route. And they come with the option, the quarterback has the ball, and he fumbled it, and we ended up on the ball. I, I can't remember for sure who got it, but uh, that was also a big recovery for us. Mm. Threw into a crowd there a little bit, and we have to kick the ball deep. For a minute, I thought he was going to bring it up the left sideline here, but, but we are able to contain him and, and keep him behind the 20-yard line. Little reverse play that we tried with Trevor Pavich. It ended up being a good gain of about 10 yards. In the pass, uh, we were throwing back with Gary Hurt, and you know, really it was close. It could have been intercepted. It could have been a big game. And there you see that's the end of the half right there. After this break, we'll come back and take a look at second half highlights. can be found all over this country, on the sports field, in the schoolroom, in the home, on the... Back. And we're going to put some pressure on him here. Todd Gransky chasing him down from behind. Danny Gall's there again. They had the quarterback sweep play in, much like what Emporia had in, mm -hmm. in the past. And they're moving down here and getting in very close to scoring territory, and they're going to punch it in. And it's, you know, it's, it's right back in the game again, and you've really got to be concerned. Travis Valeen on the kickoff return. We didn't do quite as good a job as we'd like to have done on it, but he's nearly loose. If he had been able to maintain his balance, he might have gone the whole distance. This was a pass that was just laid in over there to Paul Riley. He makes a nice catch, and then they got a late hit, and we were unable to do a whole lot with it. And then they came back, and they run a play we call the outside beer. They run outside of the tight end and pick up four or five yards. And again, there's a guy that you know appears to be wide open, we, but we broke on the ball in good mm -hmm. shape. Comes the option game. Nice fail there by Danny Gall. Good low tackle and really put him on the ground. Sprint option play. And we get good pursuit there. Big hit by Scott Baker. And then his teammates followed up. But again, you can see there, right, the great tackle by yeah. Troy Schubert right there. <laughs> he rolled his hips and really stood him up good. And, but they're going to score. And, they're, you know, they're, it's going to be a, just getting to be a closer ball game. But that's the last time that they will put it into the end zone against us. This makes it 26-14 right now, and we're in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the drives that they got, now they went for an onside kick, and we have the hands team in there, and Doug Banks gets the ball. And mm -hmm. That's a big play. We have a special team that goes in, and a lot of wide receivers, defensive backs. There's Gary Hurt coming across. Again, he found Doug Banks on an over route, and Doug took a big hit, but he held on the ball. Uh, isolation play to Chuck Mosley for a good first down gain of about four and a half yards. Here's a play by Brad Errol Smith. He ran really hard. Ran right over their linebacker. And a reverse. And this is Scott Myers' touchdown. He runs through a tackle there. Great job right there running behind his pads. And, and he did a nice job. But it is going to be called yeah. back. Uh, we, as I said, we had a holding penalty. And, and whether it was holding or not, our hands were kind of outside of where they should be. So you lose a touchdown, and you have to come back and go to work again. So we jumped in a trip set, three receivers to one side of the field, and we hit Paul Riley coming across for a good gain, but it's not enough for the first down, and we have to go for the field goal. And again, Darren's right down the pipe, and it was in good shape. And you guys see pretty good coverage here on this kickoff again. It was kind of a low kick and somewhat hard to handle. And we're in there. Matacromas again is on the tackle. They're not running the ball nearly as much as they were early, and we did a good job there. Uh, Todd Gransky is there early, and uh, probably Brent Bauer, the other defensive end that came across. You're going to see a nice punt return right here by, by Kevin Lyons. 
It is called back. They call us for, for a clip, but mm -hmm. did a really great job. He ran through a lot of things, and you know we're clear down there on the 15-yard line if, if we hadn't had the penalty. It's Greg Smith there right near the end of the ball game now. And it's a good win. You bet. That's a great win for you. Do you think that's going to help your team this week? Well, it better help us this <laughs> week. But we, you know, we have some idea of what we're in for when we go up to Wayne. And we'll have to play with a lot of intensity. And, and it ought to help our players because they come off of a pretty decent win. Okay. We'll be back after this break to talk just a little bit about Wayne State. If you work with someone who has AIDS, do you know which of these things is safe to do? Using the same coffee pots, using the same micro... ...and their number one goal was to beat Carney State, <laughs> so that gives you some idea of the importance that they place on it. Uh, they've not been successful since the early 1970s in doing that. <laughs> we certainly don't want this Saturday to be the day. Uh, we've talked a lot of, to, about it to our players. I think maybe Wayne approaches this game more in terms of a rivalry than we do in regard mm -hmm. to Wayne. I think Kearney is a big rivalry to Wayne, and I'm not sure that Wayne is a big rivalry to Kearney State. But we want to play it with the idea that it's another opportunity to get better. Uh, it's an opportunity to, to maintain some intensity and to uh, work towards a winning season, which is the main goal that we have right now. Now, Wayne suffered through kind of a tough season. They've lost a lot of key players. They really have. It's been unfortunate. They lost Damon Ross. Uh, their first ball game, he broke a collarbone. He tried to come back later on after it healed, and he was re-injured, and so now they're getting a hardship yeah. on him. He's a fine player. When you lose a player like that, it hurts. They've lost their starting quarterback, Rao. He has a broken wrist. Uh, they've lost their tight end, and they've lost a couple other running backs. So it all takes its toll, and it's not going to get any easier for Wayne because when they're done with us, they have Northern Iowa at, 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 in the dome at Northern Iowa. So they've got a, a hard road ahead, no question about it. Now, with all that youth for Wayne, what kind of things do you think they're going to try to do offensively? Well, John, that's a, that's a good question, and that's our concern, <laughs> because right now they, they do a lot of different things offensively, and we don't know if they're going to come out and major in an entirely new offense or if they're going to go back and do some of the things that they've done before. We can only practice what we've seen on the tapes, and we're preparing for a wide variety of offensive sets. We're preparing for certain types of runs and a lot of passes, and we'll just have to see what comes down. And defensively, do you expect anything special from them this week? Well, I wish I knew. Again, you know, they've been basically a five-man front team, but they do a lot of stunning with their linebackers. They all br they'll blitz their free safety or their strong safety. So we're going to have to really be well prepared. We're going to have to be alert, and we're going to have to come up with, with some big plays. We know we're going to have to have some patience, and, uh, you know, that's the way we've approached the game. We, we want to go down and score enough points to win. That's, that's the main goal, but we want to play a good football game. We want to play a game that, that will leave a good taste in our mouth as we approach the last game of the season. Do you plan or expect to be able to go into that game and just kind of run it down their throats with your big well, offensive line? Uh, John, that would be nice if we could do that, but I think I've been around football long enough that you just never know how it's going to come down. And I guess our goal is to go out and play as well as we can possibly play this coming Saturday. And if we do that, I think everything will come out all right. Mm -hmm. We know one thing, we can't go out and beat ourselves. We can't have turnovers. We can't give them long touchdown passes if we expect to win. We've got to make them go the long, hard route, and we've got to be a smart football team. That's one thing I've noticed throughout the year. You had a couple key penalties last game, but over the course of the year, you guys haven't had too many penalties that hurt you. Not really, but we had enough last week, I think, yeah. to last us for a season. I believe we had 15 penalties, and, you, you know, that's way, way too many to mm -hmm. have. Do you think that might be kind of a mental letdown, that second half team maybe wasn't as sharp? Well, some of the penalties were just penalties that were lack of concentration. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Some of the clip penalties on, on the kicking game, you know, things are happening so fast, and we want our players to go hard, and sometimes you have to live with that. We just ask them to use good judgment. Uh, but the penalty when you line up over the ball, if you're in the middle guard yeah. and you jump <laughs> outside, like we did once or twice, why, those are the kind that do hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, this might be something you may not want to talk about, but I've heard and read a little bit about the fact that Wayne maybe isn't the cleanest team in the league. Well, I think that, that Wayne has really dressed up their act a great deal. I think that they're going to play the game between the stripes, and I think they'll play as hard as they can possibly play. We intend to do the same thing, and we're not a team that likes to do a lot of talking during the game. We kind of like to let our actions, you know, mm -hmm. speak for us, and, and that's the way we've tried to approach this game. And if you get all caught up in talking to your teammates, pretty soon you lose your concentration, then you make a lot of errors. And this is definitely a big game. It could get you up to that 500 level, and that, that last game you could end up with your winning season. Well, we hope so. We know that you know that both of these games are going to be tough, but Wayne's the next one, and we're shooting to mm -hmm. be 5-5 five and five when it's over. 
Okay, with that as a closing thought, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you here next week. They've only scored 77 points total overall. Their rushing game is uh, nearly non-existent. Their uh, leading rushers, the two starting running backs today, uh, average 14 yards per game between them. So uh, <laughs> on a windy day today, they're going to have to uh, try and put it on the ground, even though Wayne State, not too bad of a passing offense. They've uh, thrown for about 160 yards per game, 190 total offense, so not much uh, production out of the Cats' uh, offense either. The uh, defense for Wayne State, giving up an average of 412 yards a game on the ground. Carney State could be in for a big day. Well, Carney State is led by a sophomore tailback, uh, Chuck Mosley, who is averaging 59 yards per game rushing, and the fullback, Scott Showon, is averaging 28.8. The quarterback, senior Gary Hurd, is 78 of 166 passes this year, for, and he's thrown for six interceptions. He has accumulated 1,153 yards and 11 touchdowns. And the leading receivers for Carney State, uh, the one in particular, Doug Banks, has caught 30 catches, and he has uh, received 538 yards this year. He's having a fine season, and he's caught five touchdowns. And senior tight end Paul Riley, he's, uh, he's been amazing this year, 23 catches uh, for 428 yards, a big asset to this Loper team. Todd Gransky is uh, the big man on defense for Carney State. He has 57 tackles with seven and a half quarterback sacks. Carney State has wins. Uh, they are four and five. They have wins over Northern State, 32 to 27. Fort Hay State, 26-13. Missouri Southern, 38-18, which Missouri Southern beat these uh, Wayne State Wildcats last week, 38-0. The Lopers' losses have been to UNO, 25 to 7. Moorhead State, 18 to 7. Pittsburgh State, 42-21. Washburn, 29 to 12. And Emporia State, 49 to 21. Carney State leads in this series 41-14, and with five ties. The last time Wayne State defeated Carney State was 16 years ago, back in, excuse me, back in 1970, 24 to nothing. The offense of Wayne State is going to have a lot of trouble, as I said before, because they uh, go primarily with the passing game. The winds are really gusting. Uh, gusts maybe up to 40 miles per hour out there. Really extremely cold, and uh, you can see the ball going on the ground most of the game today. Look for Trevor Pavich and Chuck Mosley. Give a lot of carries today, straight ahead, handoffs, and, uh, and a lot of rushing yards uh, in general for Kearney State. Not sure exactly how Wayne State is going to uh, move their offense. They might try and pass, but it could be a uh, death blow if they try. They got a young team on offense. They have a freshman quarterback in uh, Kirk Meyer. They've got a freshman fullback, and they've got a freshman wide receiver. So a young squad. And young squads can uh, make a lot of mistakes, especially in this win. When you've got a young quarterback, sometimes he can put it up and and uh, throw the bad pass, and uh, it's boom the other way for a touchdown. That was kind of evident last year. Wayne State took an early 7 to nothing lead last year behind uh, John Peasdirt's 42-yard touchdown catch, but then a 70-yard interception return by All-American Jeff Norblade propelled Kearney State to a 10-7 halftime lead, and Kearney, of course, ended up winning that one 17-10. Let's set the starters for you right now for Kearney State on offense. The quarterback will be Gary Hurt, the fullback will be Scott Shohan. Tailback, Chuck Mosley. Ryan Sis is your slot back. And the tight end, we're not sure if Paul Riley will start. We have Don Lee on here, number 80. But we'll tell you that when, that, uh, when the game finally, uh, the kickoff arrives. In the right guard is Scott Bittacombe. The right... Uh, Excuse me, the right tackle is Scott Vitticum. The right guard is Tim McCaw. The center, Brian Casper. The left guard is Keith Hauser. The left tackle is Wade Robinson. And the split in is number 20, Doug Banks. Defensively for Wayne State, you've got your outside linebacker at Bud, Bud Sachs. Defensive tackle, Randy Rouse. A couple other guys there in the front uh, three, Doug Blair and Greg Hinkle. Another linebacker, Greg Gerksmeyer. They uh, run a 3-4 linebacking core. The inside linebackers, Paul Parker and Tony Awisi. Cornerback, Ra uh, Ronnie Woodward. Free safety, uh, Mark Wolf, who's a good one. Number 33, uh, Chris Matson is a strong safety. Corey Cordell Gregory is the other cornerback. 
For the Wayne State Wildcats on offense, the quarterback is freshman Kirk Meyer, the fullback Travis Bonson, the tailback Kevin Hegedorn, and the wide receivers are Daryl Mountain and the freshman Bill Blondin. The right tackle is Tony Payne, the right guard Mark Linder, the center is Harry Gardner, left guard is Jeff Wagner, the left tackle is Paul Weston Phelan, and the tight end is Pat Wardekemper. As we can see right now, Carney State getting, red, getting set to kick off. Kicking off is the freshman Darren Groerholtz. Kicking with the win, so I uh, should be able to get a pretty good boot out of that. And back deep to receive is number one. That's Joel Ott. And number 80. And it's a short kick taken by number 46, that is. Mike Arnold on the tackle there from David City, a defensive back. He's a sophomore. So Carney State will, or Wayne State will start out on their own 26-yard line. Got a referee's cap rolling around out there. You can just see how <laughs> windy it is. Gusts up to about 40 miles per hour as Wayne State comes over the ball. Carney State for this game, for purposes of injury at linebacker, starting five defensive backs and just two linebackers uh, looking for that passing game of Wayne State. And Kirksmeyer back to pass for the first play over the middle, and it's incomplete, intended for number 20. And that is Kevin Hegador in the running back. Hegador wide open on the play there. 13 Rusty Conrad right on his heels, but it should have been caught and uh, could have got the first first down of the game there for Wayne State. So it'll be now second down and 10 from the Wayne State 26 yard line. A day like this, you gotta get pumped up. It's cold out there. Kirk Meyer over the ball now. As he barks the signals, back to pass once again into the win. He's getting chased, he moves right. And he's gonna run it now and he's got some good run yardage here up to the, he fumbles the ball and I think Carney State has it. Sloper football, they're jumping up and down down there. And I think that's what's gonna be the call. I believe Jeff Essman made the uh, initial hit there and stripped him of the ball. If indeed it is Carney State ball, and it, it, is. And it is. Carney State's ball, that's number Mike 70. White gets the fumble for Carney State. Good field position to start off with for the Carney State Lopers. And a good break here in the first quarter with 14.42 to go. Just underway, Carney State, excellent field position now at the Carney, at the Wayne State 34 yard line. The old well, fingers have to be cold out there and uh, that sometimes can contribute to a fumble. So quarterback Gary Hurt, hands off to Mosley. Mosley inside up the middle, goes right. Now he's tackled down around the 30 yard line. We'll call it a pickup around three yards, say second down and seven. Chuck running hard in there on a hard field. And uh, every time you get tackled and when it's this cold out there, that field just feels that much harder. It gets cold out there, you gotta hold that ball a little bit tighter with the, uh, it's just your fingers get cold on that ball. Once again, Gary Hurd barks the signals out. Two back are Shohan and Mosley. Mosley gets the call again, and he's stacked up hard defensively. Nice pursuit there by Wayne State. And I think it's gonna be a loss of one. It'll be now third down and so much, but look, we got a flag here. Got an unsportsmanlike con like on uh, Wayne State. That'll give the Loafers a break. First two plays got nothing practically. Two yards is all on two plays. This will give them an easy 15 and uh, move the ball down the field. That kind of hurts Wayne State, Steve, in that uh, two successful stops for the defense of Wayne State. Now a, a miss, uh, a bad call. And unsportsmanlike conduct. So now the ball is now moved down to the 16-yard line. First and first down and 10. Well, Wayne State can't like this at all. They're hoping to get out to a good quick start against the favored Lopers, and they're not in very good position right now. And the give is to show on up the middle, and he gets about two. We'll call it to the 14-yard line. Once again, stacked up by Wayne State, and thus far, three plays and about four yards rushing. And as I said before, the Lopers probably going to run the ball quite a bit. They're going to have to open up a little bit more than what they've got so far in the first three plays. We'll see if they go on a uh, 
passing situation here on second down and eight. As they come over the ball, show on the fullback. And they've got Chuck Molson again, the running back. The bottom of your screen, if you can see it, and we have movement up in the front of the line. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Wayne State jumped offside there, or, or Carney State. Drew, I believe Carney, Carney State, State did, because uh, looks to me like illegal, uh, illegal procedure. Scott uh, Bittacombe of Ewing was uh, beating his head a little bit, and that's yeah. what the call is. A little bit upset with himself. That'll move Carney back five, five yards. So it'll be second down. We'll call it 13 yards. at about the 19-yard line. Boy, I tell you what, it is cold out there. Standing out there trying to uh, get a little sunlight, There's, there, there is absolutely no warmth whatsoever in sight of your face right now. Carney said it must uh, do something quickly with the ball the first quarter and the first half. They have the win with them. It's the best opportunity. Second down, 13, hurt back to pass. They go left side over Got to Paul screen. Riley. Screen play on the left side. He picks up good guards and they can't get him down. He fumbles out of bounds. But a nice pickup by Paul Riley. Paul Riley, he's a, a key in the game. He's a horse. Paul Riley is a, a, a wor worth at least uh, uh, three to seven points in any game because he's he's a huge man and good hands, runs good routes, and uh, usually figures in on some big plays. We weren't sure if Paul Riley was going to start. They had Don Lee down here as a probable starter. But Riley is in, and the ball's now at the 12-yard line. We'll call it third down and five, kind of a passing situation for Hurt. And he pitches to, to uh, Mosley. Mosley's going to get stacked up. And Once maybe again, nothing for the running game. Nothing at all. Good pursuit by Wayne State on the right side. Looks like Carney State is uh, not going to go for the touchdown, going to be happy with a field goal here. The nose guard, Doug Blair, made a nice stop on that play. So Darren Grauerholtz, the freshman, is in. And the ball is going to be spotted at about the 18-yard line. We'll call it the 19. So a 29-yard effort here by Darren Grauerholtz. The snap is down. The kick is up. And the win is pushing it yeah. over. And it's good. He was real lucky. It started to uh, go left a little bit. Yeah, swerve over. And I thought maybe it might not. But uh, through it goes. Kearney State, the first team on the board. So it's 3-0 Carney State with 11.58 to go first quarter. And we'll take a little bit of a timeout. KSTV Cable USA and the Carney State Athletic Department would like to thank the Palm Garden Lounge, El Charo del Norte Restaurant, Misco Sporting Goods, Nick Yeros, and the Platte Valley State Bank and Trust for all the help in uh, bringing you this KSC football game. Well, once again, Carney's kicking team out on the field. Leading 3-0 on a 29-yard field goal by the freshman Darren Grauerholtz. There is Darren Grauerholtz getting set to kick off. Just kicked that field goal, which gave Carney a 3-0 lead. Cold outside. I tell you what, we're inside with a window open, and it's cold in here. It's Parents' Day once again, and the crowd has really gathered quickly. And the kickoff for Carney State, and back deep is number 80. And he lets it back go through the uh, in the end zone for a touchback. So Wayne State will have the ball starting out for their second possession at the 20 yard line. Let's try and uh, set the uh, Kearney State defense. A defensive end, number 87, Todd Gransky. Defensive tackle, Scott Yonke. Mike White at the other defensive tackle. Defensive end, Troy Schubert. And we'll set the uh, linebackers in the secondary in a moment. Wayne State over the ball now. Freshman Kirk Meyer. With two wideouts in the top and two wideouts in the bottom as he goes back to pass. Quickly inside number 20. That again is the running back, Kevin Hegedorn, and that's the second time he's dropped the ball. Meyer, the quarterback for Wayne State, has to be uh, feeling a little bit frustrated. frustrated yes. Two perfect strikes that uh, would have got good yardage, and both times the balls have dropped. But once again, it's very cold outside, and the fingers can feel a little bit like stone out there on a day like today. Yes, they can. Second down and 10 now at the 20-yard line. Same offensive uh, set for Wayne State. Two wideouts on top, two on the bottom. Back to pass is Meyer again. It's going to see a lot of this all day. And he's getting rushed. He gets away, and he falls down now. And the tackle is made by number 87. And that's Todd Gransky. I'm rather surprised that Wayne State is uh, going to the air into the wind like they are here in the first quarter because uh, 
it's just really tough to pass out there. They've got uh, four receivers plus a slot back and a tight end. And if I count right, that's uh, about uh, five receivers or six. And uh, so Wayne State not backing up a bit. They're going to go with their game plan no matter what the weather looks like. Well, they've passed every down, and one was a scramble, and they fumbled. So uh, we'll see what they do now. As Kirk Meyer goes back to pass once again, it's going to be it's a draw, and he runs up the middle. Good yardage out to the 30-yard line for the freshman Kirk Meyer. We'll see how they spot this. It was third down and about 12. Now we'll see if they're going to be a little bit short. And yeah, it looks like be, they're about a yard short. So it'll be fourth down and about one yard. And the punting unit comes on for Wayne State, and that means. Pat Waterkemper will be punting for Carney or for Wayne State, excuse me. He's a 6'1", 185-pound senior from West Point, Nebraska. Carney State doesn't have a uh, a man deep. They're uh, obviously thinking that uh, he can't punt it very far, so they're just uh, playing up. He gets a line drive kick that uh, <laughs> takes a Wayne takes State a bounce. Great bounce, and, and there had to have been some kind of a mistake. Or there must have been. I don't know what the. I they, mean, Carney State didn't have a deep back, which uh, Doug Banks usually had. They had their regular defense in there. The safeties uh, back about uh, 10, 12 yards off the line, and that's all they had. Well, Wayne State being 0-9, they have nothing to lose. You never know. They might have thought of a fake punt. Carney State was ready. Uh, Wayne State got the punt off, and took it, it took a Wayne State bounce. So Carney State has the ball at the their own 27-yard line. Hurt the quarterback. Show on and Pavich the backs. And the give is to Pavage. Pavage goes straight up the middle. Good yardage there. It gets about four yards. We'll call it five. Chuck Mosley with uh, three carries and one yard. Coach Heizer, um, Claire Boroff, excuse me, went to the other back, the mirror image of Chuck Mosley, and that is Trevor Pavage, who gets about five yards there on the play. It's tough at times to see uh, who is the running back. They look exactly alike they to do. me, except for the number. That's just it. And Pavage will stay in. So it'll be second down, we'll call it five, at the 32-yard line. Hurt barks the signals. Doug Banks at the bottom of your screen, he's the wide receiver. And the give is to show on up the middle, good yardage, and he should have a first down at about the 37 and a half, we'll call it 38-yard line, and Yeah, he got the he first down the first by down. about a yard. So Carney State moving the ball slowly but effectively with nine minutes, 27 seconds to go. First quarter, three to nothing, Carney State. Wayne State, of course, came in really fired up looking for their first win after nine consecutive losses. They've got a tough one next week in the U University of Northern Iowa, so they're looking to knock off Carney for their first win of the season. Hurt bet bout, excuse me, barks out the signals as you see Doug Banks go to the top of your screen. The give is to Pavich on the right side. Good running room up the middle, and he'll get out about out about the 47 yard line. Good run there by Pavich. Close to another first down for the Lopers. He might just be a little bit short. That They marked him down about a yard short, but nevertheless, a good gain of about nine yards for the Lopers. So we'll see what Carney State does on this play. Second and one, they can, you know, go for a pass. It'll be second down and two, they call it now. We'll see if they pass here, because if they don't complete the pass, they've got 32 to work with with the running play. They've got Doug Banks top of your screen. They've got Shohan and Pavich in the backfield. As Hurt gives a, to the slot back, that's Ryan Siss on the right side. Good running room down the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, and out of bounds at the 25 and a half yard line goes Ryan Siss. Kind of a counter move there by Carney State, and it works really effectively. Excellent play. Uh, they banged and banged and banged up the middle with uh, Mosley and Pavich and then uh, faked and gave it to Meyer around the end on a little reverse and uh, got big yardage on that. Keith Hauser, the right guard for Carney State, really uh, opened the hole for Ryan Sis. So R Sis gets the first down, Carney State moving once again, leading three to nothing. The ball at the 25 yard line. As you see Doug Banks in motion, the give is to Pavich, right side. Up the middle, now moves left, good yardage to the 20, excuse me, to the 15-yard line. He should have a first down. Kearney State starting to knock Wayne State off the ball after that first series of downs in which Wayne State came in 
pretty uh, well up in the air. Now Carney settling down and uh, doing some work out there. Well, Chuck Mosley was the starting running back, and now Pavich has got the last four or five carries. I don't think Mosley was hurt on, on any uh, play. Pavich has got eight game. yards a carry on his last three carries, so he's been very effective. So it's first down and 10. Wayne State, Carney State at the Wayne State 15-yard line. Long count by Hurt. He fumbles the ball, picks it back up, goes straight ahead. He's got some running room. He gets about six to seven yards. So kind of a broken play turns into a nice gain for the Lopers. Got to be happy with a uh, nice little five or six yard gain off a broken play, a fumbled snap of all things. And Wayne State wasn't playing heads up football right up the middle. Well, Steve, a bad play turns into a fortuitous one for Carney State. That's right. <laughs> I think Gary Hurt was kind of surprised, too. He's seen an opening in the middle. That was uh, good protection. He saw the end zone. He had dollar signs in his eyes. He wanted it. So now, second down and four. A pickup of six for Gary Hurt with Pavich and Shohan in the backfield. And Doug Banks goes in motion. The pitch is to Pavich on the left side. He cuts back right, and he's stacked up by Wayne State. Ran right into the linebacker there, covering uh, the hole. Hit about three guys. He might have had a better chance going around outside. He had a blocker out in front of him, but chose to go up the field and uh, picked up only about a yard or so. Doug Blair and Matt Holly in on the tackles for the Wildcats of Wayne State. Pavage picked up one yard. It's now third down and three. It'll be interesting to see what Carney State does here as Hurt comes over the ball. Pavichin is gets the ball up the middle, and he's going to be, well, we'll call it three yards, two yards. It's going to be close, Steve. Well, Wayne State gambled that time. They blitzed their cornerbacks on the outside, thinking that uh, Carney State would uh, pass the football, but uh, they don't. But uh, and Carney State gets the first down. They get the first down. We had a we have a bad angle up here, but it's now first and goal from the Wildcat four-yard line with six minutes, ten seconds to go, first quarter. Hurt calls the signals once again. The tight end Paul Riley in motion, and the give is to Shohan up the middle to about the two-yard line, maybe the one. Scott Shohan, a real hard worker He's out there. He's a workhorse for the last four years. And uh, not in the least bit selfish. He takes the ball when it's given to him, and he blocks really hard when he doesn't have it. So Carney State getting ready to score right here, we hope. Second down, goal to goal from the one-yard line. And we'll see. I think Pavage will get the play here. Now Brad Aerosmith checks in for Shohan, the fullback. As Hurt, Hurt barks out the signals, Paul Riley in motion. Now he cuts back to the bottom of your screen. They give us to Aerosmith, and Aerosmith scores the touchdown. Touchdown, Lopers. Great blocking on that drive by the Kearney State Antelopes. They uh, received the ball and went about uh, 50 yards, excuse me, about 60 yards on the play and, and uh, ran the ball the whole way and uh, got the touchdown. It was a pretty uh, impressive drive. It did start from the 27-yard line, so uh, 63 yards down the field for Kearney State. Now Grower holds his in for the extra point. The kick is up. And it's no good. It hooked left. The wind took it. So with 5.17 to go first quarter, it's now the Carney State Antelopes 9 and the Wayne State Wildcats nothing. Let's take a little bit of a timeout. If your campus or community organization would like an event listed on KSTV's video bulletin board, please call 234-8251. Now this is a free service provided by KSTV through the Carney State College. The video bulletin board can be seen on this channel before and after our regular programming. Once again, that number, 2348251. Well, Darren Grauerholtz would love to see some more kickoffs this first quarter. This will be his third time kicking off today. And it's 9 to nothing, Carney State. Back deep for the Wildcats, Joel Ott, number one, just a freshman from Beamer. And uh, number 80, Bill Blondin, a, uh, another freshman from Oxford, Michigan. As you see, Darren Grauholtz getting set to kick off. And here's the boot. Kind of a short kick. 
taken by number 58. Well, the ball now just drops. Number three, he, that's Mark Volk. He's got an alley. He's got one he's got man left to side, and he, and, he, and he gets hit down at the 32-yard line. The ball was loose, but the, uh, the ref's going to say that he was down. Got a man down on the field down there, a loafer. We can't see the number right now. We'll check that when we uh, can get the number. So many times on kickoffs, um, you can <laughs> flying down at full speed, and and Wayne State, of course, flying up at full speed, and you can get some uh, humongous collisions. And sometimes the body won't take that punishment, and that probably might be the case right now. Well, you can warm up all you want in a game like this, but when it's cold like this, Steve, I guess just. Uh, uh, anything can happen. I'm having a lot of trouble writing my notes down and everything. I'm just... I'm, I'm having trouble talking uh -huh. with this cold my, weather. My, my lips are... Uh, my, <laughs> my jaw will not drop. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., KSTV News Magazine will inform you on the latest happenings in the Kearney community and on the campus. That's KSTV News Magazine every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Well, as of right now, we still don't know who is down for Kearney State. With all the trainers around, we... Uh, Definitely right now cannot get a number on the on the gentleman Once again nine to nothing antelopes with about uh, five minutes left in the first quarter Wayne State not off to the good start that they'd hoped for they came in all fired up But uh, so far the lopers have let the air out of their bur bubble. That's a good word So Wayne State getting ready to go back to their offense it's got to hurt the uh, players out there just standing around in the cold like this. Sometimes you can tighten up, and, and when you do uh, resume playing, you can pull a muscle or something like that, which you don't want to see at all. That's a good point. Once again, a loper down there. Must be something uh, serious. I hope not. Carney trainers gathered around. Now both the uh, offense and defense for Carney State and Wayne State going to the sideline. Probably just uh, what they need down here is uh, for the need well, a little space heater like the pro teams have down there. <laughs> Get your hand under there. And actually, uh, we would probably steal it and bring it up here personally. That's that's true. I would most definitely like that. But right now, Wayne State getting talking over to see what they're going to do on offense. And Carney State also on talking on the top of your screen. If we can, well, we still on the uh, player getting set to. Thus far in the game, Trevor Pavich with uh, 31 yards on five carries. And, of course, Meyer has that one carry for a 29-yard gain to set the Lopers up for that touchdown that they had. I don't think Kirk Meyer has completed a pass yet, has he, Steve? No, I think he's about 0 for 4. And uh, sure. most of those passes have, well, actually, two of them have been dropped. The other two uh, didn't quite make it there. Today, of course... Parents Day at Wayne State, and what a miserable day to have a Parents Day with the weather and uh, getting beaten out too. Once again, it's it's windy as well as cold. Uh, temperatures beginning the ball game here around 38, 39 degrees. And like we said at the beginning of the game, it just feels like 10, 15 degrees. The wind is from the north northwest at about. Well, 15 gusting up to around 35 to 40. As the trainer still looking at the Carney State player that is injured. As you can see now on your screen, Carney State defense trying to get everything all warmed up and keep their motivation going. And that's a good way. They're all huddled in the hull there and breathing <laughs> inward. And, uh, the, of course, the people inside get all that hot air and, and keep warm. The guys on the outside, uh, well, they're the bigger fellows, so they can keep warm anyway. But uh, <laughs> One thing about this game in the beginning was that uh, Coach Claire Boroff didn't want his team to feel overconfident coming here to play these 0-9 Wildcats. And uh, I don't he, believe they have it so far. It seems so far, yes. And speaking of uh, Claire Boroff, don't miss the Claire Boroff show every uh, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. and Thursday at 7. Coach Boroff and the KSTV staff take an in-depth look at the ins and outs of uh, KSC football. That's the Claire Boroff show every Sunday at 4.30 and Thursday at 7 o'clock. That's a real good show that the uh, students at Carney State put together. Once again, a uh, Carney uh, antelope, Carney State antelope 
on the field and down. We don't know who it is at this point. He, uh, he's been down now for approximately five minutes or so. The Kearney State trainers huddled around him, and uh, it could be something serious, or it could be something as minor as a concussion, if indeed a concussion is minor. All right, now we'll just go ahead and take another break. And we'll resume after we find out who this person is. We're not going to find out who, who it is. They're putting a blanket over. Well, the injured Carney State player right now is going to be put on a stretcher and in the ambulance. We still don't have a number on the Loper player. Kind of hope nothing is serious thus far. Maybe this is a precautionary measure that they take when um, sometimes you get an injury around the neck region or lower back. Sometimes uh, well, yeah. they'll go ahead and put you on the stretcher and uh, make take all the precautionary measures you can take to make sure that uh, nothing is indeed uh, broken or hurt. Right, so they won't and, uh, move one spot of your body. They'll just move the whole whole body. We're hopeful that that is just the case right now. The Kearney State Antelopes uh, running around trying to get warmed up again after this uh, quite lengthy delay that they've had to stand out in this cold wind and and just miserable conditions out there. They're going to loosen up a little bit more so they can get out there and uh, try and extend upon their 9 to nothing lead. Just five minutes uh, left in the first quarter so far. Kearney State some of the players with their jackets on. I'm surprised Wayne State had not have don't have any jackets at all on. I'm well, they they I probably don't have any jackets. They're, <laughs> they're out there to play football and <laughs> don't need any jackets. Well, it seems like the Wayne State and the Carney State, all the trainers are out there. They're getting ready to set him into the ambulance. We probably won't find out the identity of the player because uh, Once they because of in. all the trainers around, and they'll probably set him in, and uh, we'll maybe miss somebody later on in the game. Maybe we can get word by uh, some other means. It's just a uh, windy, cold day here at Wayne, Nebraska. Memorial Stadium, it's nine to nothing, Lopers, with five minutes and nine seconds to go first quarter. Carney State scored first and made it three to nothing on a Darren Grauerholtz 29 yard field goal. After the Lopers on that play uh, got a fumble from the quarterback, Kirk Meyer. Carney State then kicked off again. Wayne State was down and out on four plays. On three plays, I should say, on fourth down, they punted. Carney State was looking for a a fake punt or s something like that because they had no one back for to receive the punt. And Wayne State punted down around the 27-yard line of Carney State. And on a nice drive, Carney State went down and made it nine to nothing. That's where we stand with 5.09 to go. When you're not uh, watching KSTV, tune your radio to 91 Kick FM and listen to KSCV. KSC features area news, weather, and sports, and an interesting blend of contemporary music. That's 91.3 KSCV, 91 Kick FM on your FM dial. Well, right now, they're lifting the in injured player for Carney State on the stretcher and into the ambulance as the crowd gives him a big hand. Injured player Stacy Clausen for Carney State. Hope it's nothing serious and just a precautionary measure, although with all the time they spent down there, it uh, could be something that uh, he might not want to have. So I hope he's all right. Getting set to get back into the game action. Sun has come out here 
at the Memorial Stadium here in Wayne. The wind's still gusting rather hard. There goes somebody's hat flying <laughs> all the way across the field out of the stands. I don't think the sun's going to stay long as right now it goes away. Yeah, just a little bit of hide and seek there by the sun. Overcast skies. See the Loper defense there getting all stretched out and uh, warmed up, ready to go. Wayne State will have the ball. First down and 10 in the 22-yard uh, line. What's interesting to say is that uh, Wayne State, like we said before, has passed on every down. Uh, they really do not have a running game at all. Uh, their leading running back is Troy Tiedz Tiedke, that's it. And he suffered a bru uh, severe bruise on his collarbone last week against Missouri Southern. And he was doubtful for the game. And uh, as it appears now, he is out. Yeah, once again, Wayne State's two running backs that started the game today combined, and this isn't any kind of a misprint or anything like that. They combined for 14 yards a game for each and every game, and that is a non-existent running game. So we resume play with 5.09 to go. First quarter, 9 to nothing. Carney State as Kirk Myers over the ball. Back to pass. Now he's going to uh, run it himself the left side. He gets back inside. A nice tackle up, the, up there by the safety, uh, Rusty Conrad. That's their uh, best play so far for Wayne State. <laughs> On uh, another time, Meyer uh, dropped back to pass, ran up the gut of Carney State's defense, gained 11. That time, got about uh, three or four yards on the play, and it'll be second down. It's second down at Wayne six. State. From the 26-yard line, as the clock keeps ticking down, 440 to go first quarter. The two running back and fullback are, are positioned as slot backs. They've got two wide receivers at the top and one at the bottom is Kirkmeyer, or excuse me, Kirk Meyer, Kirk Meyer passes it. It's complete, his first completion of the game. Tackled in there by Troy Schubert from Elm Creek. Big linebacker put the stops on him. And the catch was made by Chad Street. He's a six foot, 175 pound freshman. And there it again is another young individual on this Wildcat team. He's from Norwalk, Iowa. So now it's uh, third down and one at the Wayne State 31-yard line as the Wildcats break huddle. Carney defense, five defensive backs, two linebackers, and four down linemen to combat this uh, passing offense of Wayne State. Kirk Meyer sneaks it on his own, and it's going to be close. I don't know. It looked like he might have fumbled a snap or something. Did you see? Well, I think he went back to pass, and they just went ahead and took it as a quarterback draw. Well, he and Wayne State says they have the first down, and they're going to bring the chains in. It's going to be very close. So far, Meyer, their only threat, carried the ball a couple of times for uh, 15 yards, passed for 7 yards. So and they fumbled once, too. That's right. Chain gang all I, bundled up in their referee outfits, and <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, ladies and gentlemen. I think he has the first down. And got he's the got first the first down, down by about half the football. So first down and ten for the Wayne State Wildcats as the crowd gets into the game, and it's going to be spotted about the 32 and a half yard line. So we'll just say 32 yard line as they come over the ball. The two slot backs are Kevin Hegedorn and Travis Bonson as Kirk Meyer comes over the ball. Two wideouts at the top of your screen. Kirk Meyer back to pass once again. He rolls right, throws downfield into the win, and it's gonna be incomplete. And Dan Gall, number 11 for Carney State, Almost had a shot at the ball. Boy, I sure don't know how he overthrew his uh, big tight end over there against the wind, but he did. He overthrew everybody of about uh, seven, eight yards past everybody. Kirk, and Kirk Meyer is a uh, he's a six foot, 170 pound freshman from Omaha West Side, and Steve, he's got a pretty strong arm to throw in the wind like that. Exactly. Nice tight spiral. If you can keep it a spiral and not get any of that duck. Uh, flapping action on the end sometimes you can uh, get it to cut through that wind otherwise the wind just bats it down second down 10 Kirk Meyer dishes to number 12 and that's uh it's a big tight end that's that's, that's Pat Waterkemper he's also the punter 
kind of a shuffle pass there from Kirk Meyer. And he picks up around, we'll call it five yards. It'll be third down and five. Another passing situation for the Wildcats. Thirty-seven yard line. As Kirkmeyer barks the signals out. Going back to pass, kind of rushing from Connie State. They chase him on the right side. And it's he goes in the he gets free on the outside, and he gets the first down at about the 48-yard line. A good run by the quarterback, Kirk Meyer. Mike White and Todd Kransky ran him out of bounds, but not before. He picked up about eight yards for the first down. Carney State rushed, and that gave time for Kirk Meyer to go on the right side. Todd Gransky had a shot at him about the 38-yard line, but Kirk Meyer went around him toward the outside and picked up about 10 more yards. So it's first down and 10. And that's Wayne State's biggest play of the game so far with 2.31 to go first quarter. Meyer, the quarterback, running quite well, better than he's passed, and Carney's got to look out for that and not put on such a strong rush, and they've got to contain him a little bit better than that. It's the 47-yard line they mark it. A real quick dump pass, number 20, that's Kevin Hagedorn, and he gets out across midfield to the Carney State 47. And a good pickup, about six yards. Wayne State on the move. That uh, little uh, uh, delay in the game there must have inspired them somehow. I don't know. But uh, they're now moving the ball on the they Carney State defense. Could have uh, developed a different strategy and maybe talked over and, and see what Carney State's defense had and made a few changes. Nevertheless, second down and five from the Carney State 48-yard line. They've got two wideouts in the bottom of the screen as Kirk Mile goes left. He passed it inside to number, I can't see it now. I think it's, I think it was uh, Kevin Hagedorn once again. It was a nice little flip there by Meyer. Nice little tight spiral again, like he's got to have in the win. It was to number 80, that's Bill Blonde, and he's also a freshman on this Wayne State team. And a first down as well. So first down and, go, uh, first down and 10 for Wayne State at the 43 yard line. With a minute 22 to go, first quarter. Wayne State trailing by nine, nine to nothing. And trying to get something going right here with the wind against them. Kirk Meyer over the ball. Two wideouts on top, two wideouts on the bottom. Another quarterback draw. And this time he stopped cold. He's munched. He's munched in there. Munched down. But number 40, that's Troy Schubert. And Schubert. Gets Kirk uh, Meyer for a loss of one. Gave him a little grass stain <laughs> on the old behind there. Second down 11 as the clock keeps ticking to 42 seconds to go first quarter. Kind of a strange offense, all those receivers all over the place. Now you can see just how little they rush the football other than the quarterback. Kirk Meyer to pass inside and number 84. <laughs> he wasn't in expecting the ball. He looked up and the ball was there, hit him in the hand, and he thought, gee, here came the ball. Rusty Conrad out there with him as well. The ball could have been caught. It was a nice throw by Meyer. He ran a deep route, and when he turned around, the ball hit him right in the uh, fingers. You know, and that hurts out there in the cold. <laughs> it does, but stick your whole hand out there and boom. If he would have turned around a little bit uh, quicker, I think he would have been gone to the races for a touchdown. But it's now third down and 11. Another passing situation. Well, passing all the time, I should say, with 25 seconds to go first quarter. Checking off at the line there to yes. a different play. Kirk Meyer back to pass. A little bit of a rush by Carney State. And he's going to be sacked. Sacked by number 87. That's Gransky. And number 99. Kurt Metziger actually made the first contact from Bancroft and, and Carney. Stops Wayne State in their tracks after uh, getting the ball moved on a little bit. Well, Wayne State, pretty impressive drive. But now, fourth down and 21. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So, end of the first quarter, your score, Carney State 9, Wayne State nothing. And let's take another timeout. You're watching KSTV, Cable Channel 25 in Kearney, Nebraska. This broadcast is 
produced by students in the broadcasting department at Kearney State College. First quarter comes to a close here at Memorial Field, Wayne, Nebraska, the Wayne State Wildcats here on Parents' Day. The crowd trying to get their team motivated. So, so far, uh, being shut out nine to nothing. It'll be fourth down and 21 at the Wayne State 46-yard line as Pat Wardemeyer comes in again to punt. This time, Carney State has two receivers back deep. Doug Banks, number 20, and number five, that's Kevin Lyons. Thus far, Carney's outgained uh, Wayne State 82 yards to uh, 52. Wayne State moving the ball a little bit. Carney State not moving it as well, probably, as they'd like to, but... A uh, high kick, a punt for Wayne State, and it takes a nice Wayne State bounce once again. What's interesting is the wind's from the north, and he kicked it to the north, and he gets out another good punt. Well, any time that uh, you can get a punt to uh, get a line drive. Sometimes that doesn't give you the best distance, but if it hits right, that uh, it can roll the right direction, and uh, well, then you get a nice bounce out of it, and that's what you get for not catching the punt. What's interesting was the time was showing no time on the clock. I think there was a penalty. And there was a penalty, I didn't see at it. At the end of the half, so, or first quarter, excuse me. So it's now the end of the first quarter. It's still nine to nothing, and we go to the other end. Carney State will start deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line. 76 yards rushing thus far for the Lopers. And uh, that really, that's a pretty good total if you were to times that by four over a full game. Almost 300 yards or a little over. So two things in this first quarter. Carney State leading 9 nothing. You could say also Carney State all rush and Wayne State all pass. So first down and 10 for Gary Hurt with Shohan and Chuck Mosley in the backfield. First pass from Hurt is inside to number 16. That's Travis Valeen. Sounds like a quick, good pickup. Quick pass from Hurt to Valeen. And a pickup of about, we'll call it, uh, let's see, about nine yards. So it's second down and one. Carney State this time going into the wind. Kind of a fun down on second one. You can do about anything you want to. Yes, you can. So Hurt barks the signals out again. A long count. And the give inside to Shohan. And Shohan's not real fun for the Lopers that time on not second down and one. They went the conservative route and they got stacked up in the backfield. He lost maybe a yard, maybe two, maybe third down. That Wayne State defense just got in there really quickly. And Hurt had a hard time giving the ball to show on almost a fumble on the play. So good pursuit by the defense of Wayne State. And a loss of one. So it's third down and two. And if Wayne State can stop Carney State here, it'll be deep in their own territory. So Wayne State looking at a rush right now. Hurt long count as the wind picks up a little bit more. Wayne State's got 10 people within. Uh, five yards of the line of scrimmage and Carney's gonna pass. Hurts going deep and it's gonna be overthrown. The intended receiver was Travis Valine. Only one guy to beat over here uh, for the Wayne State. They had one defensive back, Valine, all by himself out here. Ten Wayne State players were round and bunched in the line of scrimmage they thinking looked, Carney was gonna run it and if and if Hurt could have got it there, he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. So now Carney State now fourth down and three. After going first down and 10, then second down and one, they cannot get the first down. Punting situation, Doug Banks to punt. He's standing near his goal line, the four yard line. A big rush by Wayne State. They almost get to him. A short kick, Wayne and it State's takes a Wayne State bounce this very time. Very good field position to start out with in this second quarter. So they're gonna mark the ball at about the 39 yard line. So excellent field position for the Wayne State Wildcats. We'll see what they can do with the wind. With 13.20 to go, first half, Carney State leading nine to nothing. Well, what do you bet they uh, throw the football with the win? What do you bet? Well, we've got to hold on for a second here. Wayne State was called for offsides, and it looks like Carney State will have an automatic first down. Well, that's a big break for Carney. Big break. That hurts Wayne State. 
instead of it being Wayne State ball on the Loper 39, it's Loper it's, ball. It's Loper ball on the 24-yard <laughs> line. Big turnaround here. Wayne State needed something to get their team motivated or the crowd into the game as well. And now Carney State has the ball. So first down and 10, Gary Hurd, the quarterback. One setback, that's Shohan. And the give is to, it was Aerosmith. The give was to Aerosmith. Aerosmith came in for Shohan, the fullback. And he's up the middle for a gain of around three or four. And Doug Blair, the nose guard, made the stop for the Wayne State Wildcats. The net, Doug Blair has made a lot of tackles this first half. Well, the Wayne State defense in particular has played a pretty decent game overall. Carney came in here thinking they'd probably blow them out, and, and a lot of people did, and it just hasn't happened right. so far in this game. The reason why Blair has made a lot of tackles is because Carney State hasn't gone left side, right side. They've been up the middle, like this play right here from Chuck Mosley, and he gets outside or in the inside to about the 36-yard line, a good run by Chuck Mosley. He's back in the ball game as Trevor Pavich was doing the work the previous possession, Carney State had the ball. So it's a first down for Carney State with 12, 37 to go first half. 36 yard line. Chuck Mosley seeing his first daylight of the game after a couple of runs with nothing. So I think it's Aerosmith, the fullback, and Mosley with Doug Banks at the bottom of the screen, as you can see. It's like a blitz. And the give is, a, is a, a reverse to, I think that's uh, Ryan Sis. Well, that's Meyer. Or Meyer. There the he slot back who uh, ran 29 yards last time he ran that. He doesn't get anything this time. Picks up maybe a yard, and that's it. Yeah, they're going to call it a yard. Second down and nine for Connie State. As you see the Connie State offense right there. With the wind against them, we'll see if they keep it on the ground. As the wind picks up more, Hurt gives to Pavich, or excuse me, Mosley on the inside. Good running room. He knocks off a few tackles. Maybe he got the first down he there. He might have. It's, it's going to be close. He had to get to the 47. I think he got to about the 46. We'll see where they mark it. It's going to be close. Thus far, Wayne State's defense has been jumping around a lot. Linebackers have been uh, blitzing a lot and gambling in general, and uh, Carney thus far hasn't exploited that in the way of a big play. So Carney State does get the first down. It's first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Loper's on the move again with Shohan and Mosley in the backfield as you see Doug Banks in motion go to the bottom of your screen. He gives up to middle to Shohan, and he's a nice move. Nice running right there by Scott Shohan. Actually, and that's, that was that's Aerosmith. Brad Aerosmith. They have the same, they have Aerosmith as number 45, Shohan's number 42. Kind of look the same. And they look the same, just like Pavich and Mosley do. Well, exactly, and plus a five kind of looks like an upside down two, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> I do believe you're right. So, a good move by Aerosmith. A good run, I should say. A pickup of nine yards. He'll be one yard short. It's second down and one as the ball scoots away with the wind pushing it. So indeed, that offside penalty was a big play. Carney driving again and uh, looking to l take uh, more points on the board and add to their nine to nothing lead. So a long count by Hurt. He drops back to pass and he's getting rushed in a oh nice sack. Oh my goodness! Nice sack from number. That was number 28, 28. Mo Walker from Omaha Burke. He come flying through there on one of those blitzes. This time it worked, and he got hurt. Sacked him all the way back. Uh, well, he lost everything that Aerosmith had gained on the play before, so it'll be third down and 10. The offensive right guard, Keith Hauser, didn't do his assignment. I know that. Let him go by in a nice sack. So now a loss of about nine yards, third down and 10. That motivated the Wayne State defense. We'll see if they rush once more. They don't uh, show rush and back to pass is hurt and a draw to Aerosmith. Aerosmith 
pushes inside and he still fighting. Good hard running by Aerosmith there. He turned it about a two yard gain into a seven yard gain. Nevertheless, the Loafers will have to punt the football. Good run by Aerosmith. And a few words exchanged on the field as the two teams kind of uh, yelling at each other. One of the Carney State players pushing the other Carney State player back. So fourth down, Doug Banks in the punt. And right now, Wayne State, the gentleman back deep, is finally getting back there. They'll look for a real long punt. Ten men are almost on the line for Wayne State. They're looking for a block right here. And it might be offside. I think calls. I straight up in the air, straight, straight in the back. Air. In fact, if, do you think he? Uh, <laughs> they they've lost. He, they lost yardage on that punt. I think he lost one yard. <laughs> a one yard loss. That's what happens when you have wind 35 miles per hour right against your face. Well, you, on a punt, you've got to. It's you like don't punt it the same way you do as uh, in regular weather. You've, you've got to punt it lower. You've low got to and straight. hold the ball low, kick it low on your foot. And uh, <laughs> he didn't do it that time. He hit it clear up on the ball of his foot. And, so uh, it was a loss, of, uh, that's a loss of three yards. Be that as it may, it's first down Wayne State at the Carney State 49-yard line. So good field position for Wayne State. We'll see what they can do with 8.58 to go first quarter. That punt ought to help Doug Banks average, that's for sure. <laughs> Two uh, wide receivers at the bottom of your screen as Kirk Meyer goes back to pass. He gets pursued. He's in he big fumbles trouble. and another fumble. Carney State Co football. Carney State has it. Carney State picked up by number Jeff 88. Jeff Essman from Thedford got the football. He just uh, rushing in there. Ball flew loose. He saw it laying on the ground and says, look, Ma. <laughs> So just as Wayne State has good position, Carney State now gets the fumble, and now Carney State has excellent position. At the 44-yard line. Wayne State playing hard, but they're being awfully nice to Carney State, letting them off the hook once again with the big fumble, and uh, Carney State gets another shot. This is their uh, third chance at uh, going this other end of the uh, football field to get this one. So hurt over the ball. The show on the fullback, and I do believe that's Pavich, or is it Mosley? It's tough. Is it Pavich, or is it Mosley? <laughs> <laughs> As Doug Banks at the bottom of your screen, a long count by Hurt. And Probably a little bit uh, too much game. time. I do believe. I don't see anybody offside, and that's what the call is. From referee Roger Stone. And they'll back up five yards, so it'll be first down 15. The ball marked 41 yard line. As Hurt calls the signals. And the give is to Pavich. Right side running room. He gets a good run. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Got well, a good seven yards there it's a on good the seven play. seven yards. So, so far, Pavich looking awfully good running the football. So he gets half the yardage back. We'll call it about second down nine. They're going to call it six yards. Second and nine. As you see Doug Banks, bottom of your screen. The slot back, Sis. Fullback, Shohan. And Trevor Pavich, the running back. And Hurt going back to pass. He's got inside, a man. Inside to number 20. That's Doug Banks. And he gets a first down inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Good running room there by Doug Banks as he cut back left. And an excellent pass into the wind by Gary Hurt. We have to give him credit. Doug Banks, an excellent receiver all year long for the Lopers. He uh, has uh, great hands, runs great routes, and has a little speed to go with him. And uh, he's one of the better players on this Loper team. Really shines out. He is. He's an all-around player. He's a junior. He's uh, a good chance to make All-American uh, maybe this year and next year. So Hurt, the ball, a rush from Wayne State as Pavich goes right side, cuts back. And I think if he would have went outside, he might have picked up more running room. Well, it looked like he might have around the outside. We don't have a good angle to uh, tell exactly how that uh, backer was positioned out there. But uh, Pavich has a lot of speed and possibly could have got around the corner over there. Making the stop was Mark Wolf. He's from Aurora, Nebraska. 
And that's a pickup of six yards, so it's now second down and three. After it was first and 15, it's third down and three it should be. Or am I mistaken? Yeah, I think I believe it's third down. Well, they got a second down, but the give is to Pavich and pursuit by Wayne State. Nothing and doing. He's uh, shut back behind the line. Good penetration there by uh, Wayne State. Big uh, number 91 got in there. He was uh, Dan Ferringer from Bloomfield, a big junior. Well, they're going like to call it now third down now. Looks like I'll Pavich might have uh, hurt himself. Turned an ankle there or something. So it's now third down and six with 6.37 to go first half. Carney State still holding on to that nine to nothing lead. As uh, players shuffle, shuffling in and out for Wayne State and Carney State. Mosley's in the backfield now after Pavich was injured a little bit there on that play. Wayne State not looking to rush on third and eight. The give is to Mosley up the middle. He goes right side, good running room, and a nice tackle on the outside, and not until Pavich Picks up the first down. I do believe he has it, and he does. So right there, Wayne State on third down had a chance to hold Carney State. Pick up a nine yards there by Mosley, and he's uh, got three straight nine-yard runs. Chuck Mosley, after a gain of two, a gain of nothing, and a loss of a yard, he's uh, come out and started running a little bit. A good player, and ladies and gentlemen, only a sophomore. So Hurt has the ball. He's over the ball for Carney State at the 16-yard line. First down and 10 with Shohan and Mosley in the backfield. The give is to Mosley up the middle of the gut, and he picks up two, Still three yards. Driving. <laughs> He's a tough, tough little guy, 5'6". And they're going to pick up about three yards on that play. Seems like nobody could get him down there. Well, he's a hard runner. He's short and compact and uh, look good leg strength and uh, a lot of good speed, a lot of good moves. Uh, just a pretty decent runner from uh, Chuck Mosley. 13-yard line is where the ball is spotted. As Hurts over the ball. Doug Banks in motion now, as you can see, going across your screen. And the give is to Mosley on the right side. He gets inside to the... Right through the middle. And he might pick up about four or five yards there. We'll call it down about third down and two. And Carney State just working with that clock. It's down to 444 to go first half. Carney State uh, loper tailbacks could have a big day today thus far. Rushing for uh, pretty good amounts of yards in this first half. Chuck Mosley uh, tearing him up the last five times he's carried the ball, and Carney State has been given this drive on a silver platter by Wayne State, even though Carney's rushed very well in this, uh, in this drive. As you see Travis Bleen in motion, the give is to Shohan up the middle, and he should pick up the first down. Good effort there by Shohan. And they call timeout. They might measure. We've got a bad angle, but they do get the first down. So Carney State with a lot of first downs this second quarter. And they're just moving the ball little by little, taking time off that clock, trying to score here before halftime. So it's first down and goal. Carney State at the five yard line, just outside the five. Wayne State trying to hold Carney State just to nine points this first half. Wayne State showing a little bit of a rush. That's Doug Banks across your screen. And a rush there, a hurt inside, and the intended receiver was Shohan on the right side. He fell down. And a good rush by Wayne State. So it's now second down goal to go from the five yard line. Look at the play selection so far. It's very evident the wind is playing a big part in this one. Carney State thus far has rushed the ball 28 times and passed the ball just five. That last one there was just the fifth time that Carney has passed the ball. Carney State over the ball now. Second down, goal to go. Carney State trying to extend their lead to 16 here with another touchdown. As you see Paul Riley in motion on the right side. The give is to Mosley on the right side. Good pursuit by Wayne State. And he's stacked up. 
Maybe a gain of one or two. Good pursuit by Wayne State. And really might help Wayne State quite a bit if they could hold Carney to a field goal here. Going to the locker room, 12 nothing. It looks a lot better than uh, 16 to nothing, in which it take a couple of scores to uh, get uh, back into the game. Wayne State would love a fumble or something here to keep it as it is now, nine nothing. So three minutes, 10 seconds to go, first half. It's been a long first half. Gary Hurt over the ball. Wayne State players on the right side. And the give is to Shohan up the middle, and he did not get in. Ran right into the teeth of the Wayne State defense there, right over here on the uh, left side of the football, where there was probably seven Wayne State guys over there looking to possibly blitz or something like that. And, and Paul Riley showing Coach Bl uh, Claire Boroff, it's only about a foot, so it'll be interesting to see. It's fourth down, goal to goal. And it's gonna be marked at the two yard line. So fourth down, goal to goal, with two minutes, 15 seconds to go, first half. Wayne State coach is trying to get the crowd up, and the crowd is getting up for Wayne They're gonna State. They're gonna go for it. So here it is. Two minutes two before halftime. Fourth down, goal to go. Hurt over the ball, barking out the signals. Wayne State anticipating. The give is to show on up the middle, and he scores the touchdown and a flags down. Got a couple of them. So flags down. It might be uh, offsides against Wayne State. If it is, Carney State will decline. Seemed to me like and it was a late flag. As soon as he went over the end zone, the flag came out. Well, so it's kind of up in the air whether what the call is. touchdown, and loafers. They're going to call it yeah, offsides. Wayne State decline. Touchdown Lopers, 15 to nothing. Kind of a late flag there for it was. the referee. I thought, yeah, should I call it? I don't know. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was, a. to me, I thought it was offsides all the way, but it was late, so that kind of, I was a little bit in doubt. Right now, they're moving the ball to the left side of the field. I really don't know why. And the reason Loper's is, gonna Carney go State going to go on here. two. Gonna try and get the get the extra point back that they missed at the so other. So they're gonna end of the go field. for two with Shohan the fullback and Trevor Pavich is back in. He's the running back. A long count. The pass now is to him. 86 Paul Riley and the two point conversion is good. So with a minute 55 to go, first half, Carney State extends their lead. It's now the Lopers 17 and the Wildcats nothing. If your campus or community organization would like an event listed on KSTV's video bulletin board, please call 234-8251. This is a free service provided by KSTV through Kearney State College. It's the video bulletin board. You can uh, see it on this station before and after our regular programming. Kearney State getting uh, set to kick once again into a stiff breeze. Been knocking punts down. This will be the fifth time Darren Grauer Holtz will kick off. And we're still in the first half. Wayne State kind of looks like Pittsburgh, don't they? Got the nice uniforms. Look Black. really nice. Really nice uniforms. Kind of like the Pittsburgh or the Iowa Hawkeyes, Iowa Hawkeyes I was going to say. Garholz getting set to kick off. Back deep for Wayne State is number one, Joel Ott and Bill Blodden. The ball goes to Ott, well, to Ott, and the ball will go out of bounds. Good I don't know why. Off. I don't know why Ott chose to pick the ball up. He's in big but trouble. But he did, and... Got a flag over there, probably an it'll, illegal it'll blocker. It'll be a, a clip, clip, and it'll be like half the distance of the goal line. If Ott would let the ball go, it would probably went out of bounds. And it would have been a five-yard penalty on Carney State to kick over. So I don't know what was running through well, Joel Ott's mind. it, it might mind. have uh, rolled over there and yeah. just kind of went up in the air and possibly wouldn't go out. And you've got to pick that ball up well, if least you've got any doubt whatsoever because it's a live ball. If a ball went down there in a hurry, I thought maybe she, he'd wait for a bit. And then if it didn't go out, pick it up right away because he nonetheless didn't get any yardage out of that. Bad news for Wayne State, get a bad return, and now they got a penalty to boot. A block below the waist. 
So That'll take him back half the distance even farther. So it's first down and 10. I was going to say goal. I don't know why, just because the ball is that deep. <laughs> first down and 10 for Wayne State. The ball is marked at the four-yard line. And if Connie State can get some pursuit in there with uh, passing by Kirk Meyer, uh, we might see a safety. So we'll find out right here. So first down and 10, Kirk Meyer over the ball. Two wideouts on each side. Kirk Meyer dumps it. Now he's going to pass. And he's uh, chose to run the ball up the middle. A pickup of, I do believe, uh, well, zero to one yard. <laughs> I think that's uh, pretty premeditated there. He didn't look real hard to throw the football. And, and I probably wouldn't either. Down on the uh, three-yard line, 97 yards to go. Uh, just a minute and a half left in the football game. Well, in the first half. If, all that's, if that's all they're doing, and Kirk Meyer is just going to run the ball, I don't know why Carney State don't keep calling timeouts and uh, keep, you know, pinning them. Well, of course, uh, they're cold. <laughs> well, true. That's, <laughs> I, I guess I'm a little bit warmer. Not uh -huh. much, though. Not much at all. Kirk Meyer back to pass, and it's going to be overthrown. I don't know who that was to. I'll I was had a man in a general area, but... Uh, <laughs> it's intended uh, for number 84. And that's John Pesner overthrowing. So it's now third down and 10 with one minute, one second to go. And it'll be interesting to see if they can get out of this jam and get a first down. If they can't, it'll be a fourth down situation and a punting situation pretty deep for Wayne State. Yeah, that last pass stopped the clock. So uh, Carney State can uh, possibly get the ball back if they can stop them here, call a timeout and see what they can do. So Kirk Meyer back to pass once again. He'll run it, and he gets on the outside. Nice tackle there. Nice tripped-up tackle Mike there White. by Mike White, number 70. And Connie State calls timeout, like I've said. So it'll be fourth down and eight from their own five-yard line. And the punter, Pat Wardekemper, will uh, come on to punt. And he's going to be very deep in his own end zone. We'll see how many guys... How many gentlemen Carney State will bring to the line to see if they can uh, block this punt? Well, Wayne State should be able to get a uh, decent punt off there. Be punting with the wind, get a good and high kick, and let the wind do the work. Uh, we can say it now. We hope uh, that's what he can do. And uh, back deep, Kevin Lyons and Doug uh, Doug Banks for the Loafers. So Doug Banks, of course, has already returned one for a touchdown this year. So Wardemeyer back to punt. He's standing at the end of the end zone. Doesn't have his uh, usual amount of room, so we'll see what you happens. gotta watch it that you don't step back on that line when you get the football, but he doesn't. And Kicks off, not a very good kick. And it takes, a, pick it it takes, a, uh, it takes a Wayne State and bounce. For the third time, Carney State fails to catch the football, and they lost 15 yards of field possession, and probably more because they could have returned it. And so that is a no-no. So a 55-yard punt from Pat Wardemeyer. He's punted two other excellent, well, punts, I should say. So that's going to help his average a lot. So 41 seconds to go till halftime. 17 to nothing, Carney State. It's been all Carney State this first half. The ball placed and marked at the 39-yard line. We'll see what Carney State will do. Little time left. Hurt over the ball. A long count. And he's going to go back to pass. Downfield to Paul Riley. A nice one-handed catch. catch. One-handed catch by Paul Riley. A hurry-up offense for Connie State with 30 seconds to go. Those hands. Great big tight end. You can't ask for any more than that. Cold day. Uh, excellent catch. So hurry-up offense. Connie State now. 47-yard line. Hurt to pass over to, again to Paul again. Riley. He's trying to get out, out of bounds, and he does it. He gets out of bounds at the 48-yard line. A pickup of six yards. We'll call it... I think uh, well, that'll get the first down. And a flag on the play as well. We'll see what they call. That's what's so good Th about having a big tight end who has good hands and some decent speed. Paul Riley can get open over the middle when he's got a linebacker or somebody on him like that. And when you uh, need to stop the clock, you need a big guy like him to uh, carry the men out of bounds. That's not right. Get tackled in bounds. There might have been a late hit on the play. If that's the case, 
And well, it's I don't know. Another unsportsmanlike like conduct. Some people may not like him. He got one of those last week, too. Somebody hit him a little bit late. Maybe they don't like him. I don't know. Well, this might give uh, Carney State a break. With only 12 seconds left, an unsportsmanlike conduct for Wayne State. That'll move the ball downfield 15 more yards. Well, they've got to get it a lot closer than what they've got it now for a field goal. At because least they're to get it into going into the wind. 20, 15 yard line. They're marked at the 33 yard line. I don't know what they're going to do. What they've got to do is hit about a 15 to 20 yard pass and call timeout immediately. Or, or once again to the tight end and get out of bounds again, like we've said. So Hurt calls the signals. He goes back to pass, drops. That's lots of time inside to Pavich. He fumbled the football. He fumbled the ball, and we'll see who has it. They'll call it incomplete. Yeah, they're going to call it incomplete. Four seconds remaining. Four ticks on the clock until halftime. Don't see half that time. a lot. Although Doug Banks was uh, charred pretty good. Doug Banks usually holds on to those. You don't see that very many times. Well, second down and ten from the Wayne State 33. Either Gary Hurt can be conser conservative and get it out and just hold on the ball and let the clock expire or just go ahead and throw deep into the end zone. And as I say that, Connie State wants to call a timeout, so they might they're have gonna, some kind of strategy well, on hand. I, I believe they're going to try a field goal. They sent wholesale changes in. And oh, man, with the wind going, moving about 25, 30 mile an hour. That's a 50-yard field goal they're looking at. Into the wind. And I don't know if Grerholz could do the trick. Russ Harvey, the quarterback, coming to the uh, huddle there. And he, of course, is the holder and second-team quarterback. So he's coming in. We'll of course, see. he's probably maybe... maybe yeah, they're going to uh, try a field goal. I was thinking maybe... Well, I was wondering what uh, Harvey was doing. The ball's going to be placed right at the 50-yard line. It's going to be a, f excuse me, 40-yard line. It's going to be a 50-yard effort by Darren Grauerholtz into the win. I'll call it 49. <laughs> All right. <Just> <laughs> I don't know what they're waiting for. The players want to get out of there, get warmed up. Well, if the freshman can hit this, he's got, he's got my he's vote. got potential in the future. And it's going to be a fake field goal as Harvey throws downfield, and it's going to be incomplete. And time has expired. There is a flag on the play. In the first half, we'll and see that. And the half can't end on that. It's Let's on Carney that. State, I believe. And no, it's going to be on Wayne State. Well, Carney, there was Carney a Wayne State player players jumping up and down. Well, Carney State players were clapping too. And it's going <laughs> to be offsides. And uh, we either we're going to see another fake field goal, or we're going to try to see a field goal attempted here. Well, of course, the half can't end on a penalty, so Carney State's going to get another shot and uh, well, see what the they can do with it this time. The ball is now marked to the 28-yard line, and Grar Holtz is going to try to attempt a 44-yard field goal, or is he, Steve? Or is he? <laughs> da 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 da. Here's the snap. It's He's down. The kick is it. up. It oh has my room. Goodness. And it's hit oh. the top. <laughs> it hits the top of the pole. Yeah, who'd have thunk that? I wouldn't have believed that. A 44 yard effort. It had good distance. And another, yeah, another flag. flag Hardy's going to get another shot. And I do believe that uh, it's going to be offsides once again. And, and I tell you. Coach, Wayne State. coach for Wayne State is upset. Wayne State is handing this to Kearney State, giving them break after break after break. Could this be a football folly scene? I tell you. <laughs> Jeez. First a fake field goal from 49 yards, and then a field goal from 44 yards hits the top on the right side. And on them two plays, two offsides for Wayne State. So Kearney State <laughs> gets another try. Well, let's see what he can... Field goal. Let's see what it can do now. It's This one's a 40-yarder. 39 yards, we'll call it. Okay, we'll call it 39 <laughs> so yards. So 49, 44, and now a 39-yard attempt. Kick is up. And this it's time short. it's going to be it's too short. short. It's he kicked, short. He kicked it too high. Yeah. And, and, and Steve, no flags. No, no flags. flags. So That's the half, so folks. It's, it's halftime, folks. <laughs> With your score, Carney State 17, Wayne State nothing. Stay tuned for the second half action. And uh, 
as the teams go to the locker to discuss some things. And I guess just uh, to talk to you, Steve, about uh, Carney State doing well on, on the running game. Uh, Wayne State just can't seem to get the get the man down. Good effort by both fullbacks and running backs for Carney State. And on the other hand, Wayne State just can't get their passing attack going. Well, Wayne State uh, in the first quarter passed 10 times, okay? And in that second quarter, they managed three. And so I think Wayne State had the ball maybe once and got off about seven or eight plays in that second quarter. That's the story of the game there. Carney State's owned the football by running it and the gifts from Wayne State in themselves. As you can see, the Wayne State band coming onto the field. Well, one thing I wanted to say was that uh, it was interesting to see Wayne State's offense and that they had that they didn't have a true fullback or a running back there. They had a slot back and four wideouts. So with a win like this, it's, became he it's become hectic on the uh, Wayne State offense. We're back here at Memorial Stadium for the second half action between Wayne State and Carney State. With the score, Carney State 17, Wayne State nothing. Looking at the statistics for the first half, in first downs, Carney State accumulated 13 first downs, most of those in the second quarter. Wayne State, a total of three first downs. In the rushing yardage, Wayne State rushed for 12 times for 19 yards, 11 of those by the quarterback. For Carney State, 32 rushes for a total of 136 yards, a good, gr a good ground game for Carney State in the first half. Passing, Wayne State 3 of 8 for 15 yards, Carney State 5 of 8 for 44 yards. So the total offense, first half, Wayne State 34 yards, Carney State 180 yards first half. The punts, Wayne State has punted three times for 48-yard average, and Carney State one time by Doug Banks for a minus four. Fumbles, Carney State has uh, lost two, or has fumbled twice, has lost none. Wayne State has fumbled twice and lost two. And Steve has now some individual statistics. Well, individually, uh, Carney uh, Mosley, Chuck Mosley, carried the ball nine times, 38 yards. Trevor Pavich, he had the identical exact same amount of yardage he got 38 Scott Shohan got some more cars like uh, yards he got 17 Meyer had uh, 30 yards on a couple of carries not much for uh, Wayne State at all uh, Meyer the quarterback rushed 11 times for 15 yards and uh, a couple of th three five yard passes is uh, the extent of the rest of their offense uh, 34 yards total offense for Wayne State they've been totally shut down and the big statistics here uh, possession time. Carney State has had the ball 21 minutes to uh, Wayne State's nine, and uh, Wayne State certainly can't uh, win the football having the ball nine minutes each half, that's for sure. Wayne State getting a start to uh, kick the ball off. The back for uh, Carney State, Travis Valine and uh, Doug Banks going to be kicking uh, with the win, so uh, should be able to get a decent kick out of that. It's number 15 there for Wayne State, he's the kicker, Mike Thorell from Wausau, yet another freshman for Wayne State. Wayne State, a very young team, and uh, thus far they've showed it, but they're building for the future, of course, with all these freshmen getting all this experience. Well, it hasn't changed anything with weather. It's still very, very cold, windy, 30 mile an hour winds. Not a good day for uh, uh, football if you're talking about wind, but if uh, it died down, 
good cold weather for a game like this. Second half underway. We got uh, Doug Banks bobbling the football. He's off and running with it, however, and uh, he cuts back, got a flag on the play, and, well, he got a little running room. He loses the football out of bounds out to the 31-yard uh, line. But once again, a flag on the play, probably a, a uh, block below the waist or something like that against Carney possibly State. Possibly a clip on Carney State. And if that's the case, they're going to be set deep in their own territory with their uh, backs against the wind. Sometimes that happens when a uh, running back runs one direction, cuts, cuts back cuts the back. other, and uh, the player that uh, you're about to block turns, and uh, you hit him in the back of the knees, and uh, that is a no-no, whether it's intentional or not. Kearney State has the football for the uh, first series here in the second half, first down and 10. Not very good field position at all. Football on the 10-yard yeah. line. Loafers come up for their first series of the second half. Shohan and uh, Chuck Mosley start out the game. Gary Hurt, the quarterback. Ball goes to Pavich, who's in there instead of uh, Mosley. He gets a little bit, but then stacked up by a host of uh, Wayne State defenders be second down. In on the tackle is number 65 that, again, Doug Blair, Randy Rouse, and Matt Hawley for Wayne State's defense. Pickup of uh, approximately six yards, at least second down and uh, four yards to go for Carney State. Nice pickup there by Trevor Pavich. The injured player in the first half was uh, Claussen, and his status right now is he has a bruised back. So he won't be back in the game at all. Meyer on another reverse. He gets some uh, running room around the uh, right side out to the 25-yard line. That's a pickup of nine yards on the play. That'll give the uh, Lopers a first down. And right off the bat, the Lopers are getting some yards on the ground. It is interesting, Steve, that Carney State is now going to the outside and, uh, on both sides. And before, the, they were going up the gut in the middle. Well, they might have made a few adjustments in the at halftime in that warm confines of the locker room. First down and 10, Lopers I formation. They got a, a Doug Banks at the bottom of your screen. Otherwise, it's a tight formation. Straight handoff there to Shohan, and he picks up about three is all. It'll be second down. While the game's going on, they're doing a little uh, parent day activities down here. All the parents have got uh, numbers of all the players out there and kind of white and black jerseys. Four yards in that pickup. So they're going up the middle. Show on is still in, and I think it's Pavich in the running back position too. Second down, six yards to go for Carney State. They'll pitch it. it. It's a reverse to Doug Banks, and he's got some blockers out there. Got another flag for Carney, so you're going to call this and back again. Either another clip or possibly a holding, holding penalty. Call. We'll see what it is. Coach Borov pulling out a trick or two here. I don't think, I don't think Wayne State was pretty surprised at all. They played it all well. Well, he did pick up about well, 10 yards on the play. It was a slow developing play. It It'll looked like at first they not. weren't going to get anything, and then he did pick up some, but I was kind of impressed by Wayne State's defense. As a couple players shuffle out for Wayne State and a couple more come in. That'll push Carney State clear back. It'll be uh, second down once again, long yardage to go. They've moved it back to the 10-yard line. Uh, that's pretty strange. Because yes. you know, What's an 18-yard penalty? I don't know. Holding 18-yard penalty. I, I don't. I can't see the. I don't uh, understand that. I think they marked it from the original line of scrimmage where they started out from, and I don't know exactly what they're doing there. I don't know if Claire Boroff knows uh, what the refs are doing either. Nevertheless, second down, 24 yards to go for the Lopers. Got an eye formation. Handoff. That is Pavich. Pavich gets to the 15-yard line. Stopped by the uh, defensive end, Greg Gerkensmeyer. 
That'll bring up third down for the Lopers, and uh, another 19 to go. Uh, passing down in most situations, but with this win, I stepped outside at halftime there, and the wind has not died down one iota. <laughs> also on that stop was Bud Sachs. He's made a lot of uh, a lot of tackles in the first half. Receivers wide and left. Gary Hurt, the quarterback. Hurt's going to throw it, and, well, he threw it to uh, the person sitting on the bench down there. Another flag on the play. A Wayne State player, number uh, seven is indicating it's against Carney State. It might be a holding call once again on the Lopers. We'll have to wait and see. Now the well, I would suppose that Wayne State would decline this and have uh, uh, Carney go ahead and punt the football because they're going to get field, good field position That's nevertheless the because you got to punt into that stiff win. There's a legal man downfield. The call. So I wouldn't, yeah, they're going to decline it. They've got to. They'll bring up fourth down for the Lopers. 19 yards to go at their own 16-yard line. Wildcats going to get some good field position out of this and uh, possibly put their first score on the board because they'll be with the wind, and <clears throat> even a field goal would help their cause right now. Doug Banks set to punt the football. Banks is hoping to get a better punt than his first one and only won the first half. Uh, kicked it straight up in the middle of the air, and with that win, it was a minus four yards, so he's kicking into the win again. A, a ten men on the line for Wayne State. A little better than his last one, but uh, not, not a real good punt out to the 34-yard uh, line of the Lopers. Excellent field position now for Wayne State to see if they can do something. They've got the win now. And with the win in the third quarter, they've got to uh, capitalize on it. That was an 18-yard punt, so if you put the two together, he's averaging seven yards on two punts. It'll be a Wildcat football at the Loper 34-yard line, first and 10. Kirk Meyer, the freshman quarterback, brings him up to the line. He got five receivers in the lanes spread all over the field. Meyer looking to pass as he has all day long. He's got a man but overthrows him by a considerable margin and he's going to adjust to that win. Be second down. Wildcat offense absolutely nothing in the first half. 34 total yards. Those were defense looking extremely good even though the weather conditions are helping them out just a little bit once again that same formation five receivers as we've seen all day steve once again meyer back to throw he's got a man and no they're going to call it incomplete the ball squirted out be third down and uh, what's new for wayne state that was intended for pat uh water kemper and he's their punter, as well as their tight end. He's a 6'2", 215-pound senior from West Point, Nebraska. And the ball was underthrown with the win. Uh, well, the pass was with the win. A surprise it died down like that. Third down and 10 for Wayne State. Carney State in a 4-2 defense. They've implemented five defensive backs to combat Wayne State, and that time it was complete. It's going to be complete, but it's going to be uh, not enough for the first down. He picked up about four or five yards, so it'll be interesting to see. I do believe Wayne State will have to go for it. I just figure they have the win now in the third quarter, Steve. Once the fourth quarter comes, I don't believe there's a chance they're going to be able to score on the other end of the end zone. And, uh, well, they're going to go for a field goal on this. Take the uh, at least three points. Possible uh, three points with the win. They're probably going to try and get anything they can get in now this third quarter. Going to be around a 47-yarder if they do. I think they're going to go for it. No, they're not. It's going to be a 47-yarder with the win. The right hash mark there. And I do believe, well, the... The referee in the end zone, it's now a delay of game for Wayne State. I I can't see what the, what their problem was for uh, 
I guess maybe it was a decision if they wanted to go for it or the field goal, and in the process, they took too much time, Steve. Well, they were late getting out on the field there. Um, we see the uh, kicker has, uh, who doubles as a linebacker, so he's a tough kicker on top of that. <laughs> Long field goal for the Wildcats with the wind, however, and that one doesn't even look close. No way. 52 yards, and that's a... Uh, that looked like uh, me kicking out there. I would say a capital S-A-D kick. <laughs> <laughs> Loafers will take over first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. KSTV, News Magazine will inform you on the latest happenings in the Kearney community and on the campus. That's KSTV News Magazine every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Loafers taking the field, the offense, for the second time this half, their second series. You got uh, Chuck Mosley and Scott Shohan in there at the running backs. Gary Hurt, the quarterback, straight handoff to uh, Mosley. He doesn't get much stacked up there after a gain of two or three. It'll be second down. Wayne State playing tough defense that time. It seemed like on every rushing play, Steve, they've went up the middle at least 80% of the time. and uh, Just good pursuit by Wayne State in the middle. Even though Wayne State down 17 to nothing, they haven't played that poorly and uh, really playing quite hard, in fact. Second down and five for Carney. Packed in there, got a slot. It's another reverse to uh, number 15. Meyer, he's got some running room out to the 40-yard uh, line, 35. He could go 30, 25, and taken out of bounds about the 10-yard line. Nice gain. Carney Excellent. State with the first big play of the ball game. Scott Meyer from Omaha picks up a lot of yardage. 40 yard, 49 yard gain. The big hole there was from Scott Vitticum. That gives Meyer uh, 79 yards on the game rushing. He's having a big game against the Wildcat defense. First down and 10, ball at the 11-yard line of Wayne State. Doug Banks runs in motion. They pitch it to Mosley. Doesn't get much. Mike Thorell from Wausau, another freshman for Wayne State, diving in there to stop Mosley for a short gain. It'll be second down. Nine yards to go. He picked up one yard. They can still get a first down without scoring a touchdown by getting it down to the one-yard line. Gary Hurd passes it inside, and they're going to call it. Touchdown, I Lopers. thought maybe it might have bounced there. Gary Hurd. Throw a low pass to Doug Banks. It did look like scooped it, it up underneath the uh, carpet there. And uh, referees call it a touchdown. Carney now leads it 23 to nothing. 9-12 left in the third period. And Carney's hustled right out there to uh, kick the extra point. Russ Harvey a hold. And the extra point is good, so very quickly, Carney moves right down the field, scores their first touchdown of the second half. They lead now, 24 to nothing. If you believe a picture can tell a thousand tales, then KSTV has this show for you. It's called Modern Talking Pictures, and it's on every Tuesday at 5 o'clock, right here on cable channel 25. 9 12 to go in the third quarter. Once again, Carney State leading 24 to nothing. Carney State's going to have to uh, kick into this stiff win that uh, we've been talking about all day long. I'm surprised the two uh, gentlemen back deep, Blondin and Ott, aren't up closer to the 20-yard line. Well, I'd say he probably won't get the uh, football past the 20-yard line, but don't hold me on it. Okay. Line drive kick. And, well, it got to the 30, and that's it. Fumbles the ball down to the 32-yard line. That was number 
58 for Wayne State. That was uh, Jeff Brownfield. He's a six foot one, 185 pound linebacker. He's also, again, Steve, a freshman from Council Bluffs, Iowa. So a lot of uh, young talent on this team. Well, it shows with their 0-9 uh, record, but then again, they're getting a lot of experience for the uh, for the next three years of their career here. Yes, indeed. First down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Meyer, the quarterback for Wayne State, drops back to pass. He's going to run the football. No, he's going to throw it. He's got a man wide open. That's number 83, John Pezdertz, a junior. What do you know, a junior Ooh. from Omaha West Side, and he picks up uh, the longest gain of the game for Wayne State. As one of Kirk Meyer's great throws. He's got potential. That was a good route. Of course, Kirk Meyer from West Side as well, so he had the little West Side connection there. Crowd from Wayne State getting up for this one. Wayne State showing their first flare of any kind of offense whatsoever. Quick pass out there to uh, I guess number 20. That's the running back. Well, supposed to be the running back. He's now playing slot back. And uh, that's Kevin Hegedorn. Pick up of four yards. So Wayne State firing up the old offense, catching the ball this half. Got to be cold out there with that football being hard as a rock and your fingers feeling like they're numb. We'll call it second down and seven. Wayne State in that uh, same familiar or unfamiliar, if you will, five receiver set. No running backs in the backfield. Once again, Meyer rolling out to throw the football, and he's going to be in trouble. Sacked down by number 84 for Carney State. F number 44, Scott Yonke on the sack as well. Chuck Acker got him first. Chuck Acker from Grand Island Northwest. Carney State just rushing four men against... Uh, Meyer and the Wildcats, and they're doing a good job of getting pressure on him. He's had to scramble out of the pocket several times thus far in the game and has lost uh, quite a few yards through sacks. Well, Wayne State, if they want to score and not get shut out, they've got to do it third quarter with this win. Third and 14, Meyer drops back again. He's going to try and throw it. And behind his receiver, that's number 30, Wade Maxwell. That was pretty close from going, uh, throwing the ball ahead of the line of scrimmage, but he did get it off. And nonetheless, incomplete, and it's fourth down for Wayne State. Once again, Wayne State will punt the football. Showed a flare of, or uh, a flicker of hope there. Just for a bit. Pat Doug Banks and, uh, and Lyons back deep for the Lopers. And Pat Waterkemper sets the punt. Terrible punt. Ball bounces around to uh, about the 30-yard line, or it'll be Loper football. Well, he that, was punting. Well, hey, wait a minute. That wind is still pushing that ball. I don't know. <laughs> that ball is alive. <laughs> I think the wind pushed it about three more yards downfield. Once again, another indication of the way the weather is acting out there, and the referee just lost his hat flying over. And he says, give me, move, excuse me, hat. Excuse me. There it is. That's uh. About the fifth time he's lost it, I think, today. Yeah, they need to put little grips on there and Some, uh, stick them to their head. Velcro or something. Loper football for the third time this half. They just scored on a uh, very long march very quickly. Let's see what they can do with it this time. I formation. Gary Hurt, the quarterback, number 10. Straight handoff there. That's Aerosmith. He picks up uh, two, maybe three yards. It'll be... Second down. Aerosmith and show on the two fullbacks for Carney State. Trading jobs back and forth today. Center of that uh, Wayne State defense is doing a good job of shutting that down and, and clogging up the middle. However, the Lopers have ground out quite a few yards through hard, tough blocking and running. Once again, a handoff to Trevor Pavich, and he's uh, scooted around for uh, about uh, five yards, and check that. That's number 30, and excuse me while my notes fly. Greg Schmitz. Well, 
Gophers pick up the first down at their own 38-yard line. And here they go again, picking up their first first down of this series. Just straight ahead football for the Lopers. Nothing fancy. Only thrown about six times so far in this ball game. The rest have been runs. I formation. Two tight ends. One receiver. Looks like uh, Gary Hurts calling an audible. Yeah, I and think a little bit of a de delay of game here. Probably should have stuck with his original play. Too much time, I do believe. And that's the indication. In come Mosley and Valine with the play. That's going to back Carney State up to the 33, 32 yard line, we'll call it, for a first down and 15. Under five minutes and under six minutes to go, third quarter. Okay, here come the Lopers. Straight handoff to Pavich. He's made some moves, and he could have got a lot more if he could have uh, slipped out of the grasp of number 33 there for Wayne State. Chris Matskin just got him by the ankles and pulled him down. Otherwise, he could have been gone with the speed he has. That's a pickup of about 11 yards. It'll be second down and four for the Lopers. Chris Matson is a 6'3", 210-pound sophomore from Olympia, Washington, Steve. Olympia, Washington. So he's used to this weather. Yeah. Pitch to Mosley. He scans the field and uh, gets about two, maybe three. I think he's short of the first down. I think he's short about one yard. And I do believe they might measure here. No, nope, first they, down. They gave it to him. Maybe I should clean my glasses up a little bit. Antelope's driving once again. Had a setback there with that uh, delay game penalty. Overcame that. And they're sitting pretty again. Doug Banks running down here to the bottom of your screen. Got a slot formation. Eye back and a fullback. Another reverse. He's going to throw it. He's got a man, too. It's Riley. He makes the catch. No, sir. He says, no, sir. You're either dropped it or you're out of bounds. And again, another trick play from uh, Coach Boroff. They'd been running that play. The reverse slot. to Meyer, and he just stopped slot and back. looked up and threw the ball to Riley. Slot back pass. From this angle, I thought he had the completion. Well, he had his back to us, too. Well, when he got and up, he Riley was disgusted at the ref. He thought he, he said he had it. Nevertheless, second down and 10. Four minutes, nine seconds left in the third quarter. Lopers lead 24 to nothing. And Wayne State showing blitz. Jumping around in there, anyway. Gary Hurt, play action throw. He's got a man. That's Aerosmith taken out of bounds. Seven yards down the field to be third down. It's a good play on him by uh, Wayne State, number 33. That's Madsen again from the sophomore from Olympia, Washington. So he's uh, showed some uh, more motivation on this defense in the second half. Haven't called his number uh, lately. Third down and four, Lopers. Myers the slot back. You got Doug Banks wide to the left. Got an eye back and a full back. Option play. Gary Hurt pitches out to uh, Smith, and he fumbles the ball out of bounds, and that's a good fumble. That's a, that's a forward pick progress up, fumble. Pick up of about uh, six, maybe seven yards. They'll take it. If you got First a fumble, down. If you got a fumble, that's the ones you need, especially on third down. Don't see very many options out of Kearney State. That one particular one did work. So Kearney State moving again. Sun. If they want to score, out once again. they like to score in the third quarter with the wind with them. First and ten, Kearney. Gary Hurt, the quarterback. He's gone all the way thus far. And another reverse to Meyer. He's going to hold on to it and get plenty of yards. Pick up of about, uh, we'll call it 14 yards. He's got 93 on the game. 
And the only man that he didn't beat was number seven, Cordell Gregory. And uh, Gregory's been very... Eighteen is uh, uh, Scott Woodward did a good job of getting down there. Wayne came out, and there's no question in their mind that they came and they were going to throw the ball from beginning to end. And there's one they probably should have had. Uh, they had no backs in their backfield at all, and just the quarterback. And I think the quarterback's going to be a fine football player. He's a young guy, and there's a roll roll pass where he drops back and then rolls out, and he kind of got inside of our contain. But we had a big hit by Jeff Esmond. Mm -hmm. The ball's left on the ground, and we have great field position with our offense. We come out in our first play is just a just a, a good running play back here to the right side. It was a power play, and uh, Chuck Mosley had a nice cut and picked up about three four yards on the play, so it's not a bad start. Then we come back with the tailback reverse, and they played it very well. They slanted on the backside, and the free safety failed well, and we came up a little short. They had a delay of game penalty or some kind of a penalty against them. It may have been a personal foul. I'm not sure, but. You're going to see that penalty right there hurt him because it yeah. gave us a first down. It looks like it's pretty warm out there with the sun shining, <laughs> but it, it was far from warm. Came with a fullback dive with, with uh, Scott Johan up inside for a short gain. We ran more fullback dives in the, this particular game than we have, and you can see there we, we did come up short, and Darren Garholtz will go for the field goal. He kicked this ball well. It, it went right through. Mm -hmm. He had kind of a frustrating day kicking. He missed the first PAT that he's missed all year, but that was a fine shot, and we were able to take advantage of a turnover and go up three to nothing on him. And then they were they were forced to punt the ball, and we played it very safe here early. We didn't even have anybody back because we felt like maybe going into the wind they would try to go with the fake, and they didn't do that, and they got a good roll. We lost about 20 yards on the bounce there. We come back with an isolation play up inside. Trevor Pavich, before he was injured, uh, he sustained a slight ankle injury, but had several good runs. Here's the fullback dive again with Scott Shohan and a good positive gain on two plays. We have the first down. Good offensive line takeoff most of the day by the offensive linemen and the tight ends. There's another power play that we ran, and you know another excellent play. You can see Wade Robinson leading downfield, and Keith, ha Keith Hauser, they just move people out. So it's second down and two, and then we come back with the reverse to Scott Meyer, who had a big day. I think he had five carries for 100 yards and has excellent quickness, and there's a fine run. Play was blocked really well. He used a little bit of motion, and sometimes it was really hard to hear the calls. And, there's another excellent run by Trevor Pavich. Actually ran through the first tackle and picked up five or six yards after the, the initial hit. Fumbled a the snap there, and Gary Hurt uh, runs <laughs> forward and picks up the first down. And, you know, you look at that, and you'd say you're lucky, but he did what he's supposed to do on a fumbled snap. You go right to the point of attack, which mm -hmm. he did, and the play was blocked pretty well. And there's a pitch play to the left side uh, by Trevor Pavich, and... Then a power play again with Trevor Pavich where he bangs up in there. And I, I think that that was a fourth down play. And we got the first down. And it's first and goal to go. And we go to three tight end offense. And that's uh, Paul Roddy leading up inside there on a dive play with uh, Scott Johan carrying the ball. And we had to substitute our fullback. And Brad Aerosmith's in there now. And he's going to get the touchdown. Again, it's the same play that we just ran a little different action. And then when you see we get pretty good line movement and Brad scores a touchdown. And then we, we do miss the, the point after here. The wind caught it, and it took it off to the left side of the upright. Pretty considering the, the conditions of the, uh, the weather conditions, I thought Wayne had an excellent crowd. You know, when their football team was 0-9, uh, they had it right around 1,000 people here, and that's considerably down play there where we got the first down. We ran a lot of plays over and over. It uh, wasn't that we run a lot of different type of plays. It, when you find something's at work, you just stay with it. There's the isolation play and good running by Chuck. Uh, actually broke out of the tackle, but they had blown the ball dead before that. There's a pitch play back to the to the right side and uh, very very close to the first down. In fact, he might have got it on that on that particular way. No, it's third and about two yards. <laughs> We come with the fullback dive, and I believe that Scott got the first down on that on that snap. So it should be first and goal. And 
And we, we came yeah. with a play that uh, we have run often. They, they got really good pressure on, on Scott, or on Gary, I'm sorry. Chuck Mosley up inside. Uh, a lot of black shirts around him this time. You know, Wayne, uh, defensively, they played hard. They never quit. They pursued to the football. And, and I'm sure that, you know, having the kind of frustrating year that they've had, there's probably times that, that you'd like to just forget it and go in where it's warm. But uh, they played hard. And they have a big task ahead of them this Saturday. They have Northern Iowa, uh, which is a school I believe has like 75 full rides. So they have their work cut out for them. And there's a, the, a touchdown by, by Gary, by Scott Shohan. We went for two points. And we find Paul Riley open in the right flat. He's wide open there. Have good luck with that play this year. It'll be a play that we won't be able to run next year. We've run it so much this year that everybody <laughs> will be ready for it. Now we're kicking off into the wind. ball bouncing around makes it really difficult. And it, I don't know if it would have gone out of bounds or not, but I'm glad that he decided that it, that it wasn't and he caught it because we have them really deep in their own end. At this point in the game, it's just like Carney's in complete control. Well, I think we really were in complete control. They, they really never mounted what I would consider to be a real serious drive, although I think once the second half there, they, they moved the ball and got the two or three first downs in succession. And they had a, a penalty on the kickoff return blocking below the waist there. You can see they're on the three-yard line. We had a good performance, 84 there is Chuck Acker, 70 is Mike White, uh, 17 Scott Woodward. Scott got in the ball game as our fifth defensive back and played a lot in this ball game. We, because of the offensive set that they were in, you know, we felt like we needed to have an extra mm -hmm. DB, and you can see we closed well on him right there. Scott Kovar got through the game in good shape and, you know, had sustained an ankle injury the week before and, and uh, had come back and had played well. Actually, I guess he sustained it a little bit in practice. There we have good coverage and he just threw it away. He tries to scramble a little bit and Mike White makes the tackle. And we had closed on it well, too, with our defensive back, so now they're forced to kick out of their own end zone. We ought to have good field position out of this. The ball was really hard to field, and one of the things that we didn't do as well is we let the ball hit the ground a lot, and here's another one of them, and they get a nice roll, so instead of, you know, being up close to midfield, we're, we're back on about the 38-yard line. It was another one of those bounces that there was probably a 15- to 18-yard loss. This is another pass play, a great catch by Paul Riley. It was, was thrown behind him, and... Just gives you some indication how valuable he's been to our team since he's gotten back. Now we're in a trip set, and we went with another route to Paul Riley. He does get the first down. And they had a flag uh, for, like, apparently for hitting while he was out of bounds. Had a couple of those, I remember. Well, yeah, they did. <clears throat> and as I said earlier, it certainly hurt them. Mm -hmm. You know, some penalties, because you're aggressive and you fly to the football, you can live with, but you can't have foolish penalties. There was a big hit right there on uh, Greg Smith, who came in and got, to, got a chance to play quite a bit because Trevor Pavich uh, sustained an ankle injury, and then Chuck Mosley had a slight injury. And there was a fake field goal, and we, they knew we were going to do it. They were back deep. So now we come back and try the field goal, and, and he hits the uprights. And that wind, it was a heck of a kick. And, you know, if it had been an inch or two farther to the left, it would have zipped right through. So he's kicking into a pretty good crosswind. And it just hits the uprights. I don't know. There yeah, they saw it. Saw right up there to the top. Had plenty of distance. He could have been mm -hmm. back another 15 or 20 yards. They had another penalty. For some reason, they were offside, uh, two of those in a row. And, and this one, again, is headed right down the middle, and the wind catches it and it just dies, just like somebody shot it. <laughs> but it looked good at the start, and you can just see it. it you know, it just actually died. But it was a good first half. Yeah, that's a real good first half for you. No doubt that builds momentum into the second half, and you feel like you're in pretty much good shape. Absolutely. <laughs> 
After this break, we'll come back and take a look at second half highlights. In the service, I was the best mechanic around. So when I got out, it was easy to find a job. There was one thing I couldn't find in civilian life. So, I joined the Army National Guard. Now I still work at the garage full time. But two days a month, two weeks a year, I take on something a little faster. Don't get me wrong, I like working on cars. But sometimes, I'd rather drive. Well, Coach, I know after a very successful first half like that, during the halftime, there's probably not a whole lot to talk about. Well, we made some minor adjustments just, you know, on both sides of the ball. Talked just briefly about the kicking game. We wanted to go out and sustain our intensity the second half and not let it get away from us and, and play hard because sometimes when you lose your intensity, that's when injuries occur. Yeah. And we, we certainly didn't want to do that. We wanted to put together a, a complete game. And although there weren't nearly as many points scored the second half, I did think that we maintained our intensity well. So you were satisfied with the total team effort? Uh, in I was, half. for the most part, yes. Okay, now we'll roll that tape and look at the second half highlights for you. <clears throat> they kicked off to us, and uh, we we're going to get, you know, not a great return by any means, but we kind of dropped the ball, and then he ends up re kind of reversing his field, and we end up with a clip. The first series here is, was not a very good one. Yeah. Unfortunately, the ball did go out of bounds there. We, we left it on the ground. A lot of our players wear gloves, and it's a little hard sometimes to hold on the ball as well. We come out, and we were able to do some things here. We, we ran a, uh, a split in reverse, which has been a good play to us from time to time. And we had the first down, made about 15, but again, we were called for a clip. And I don't know if it was a block that really had to, would have, have, have had to been made or not, because uh, Doug might have beat him with his quickness. But we were forced to kick deep, and we got a very, very short kick here. I think Doug had two kicks for a total of 14 yards, seven yards per punt, and that, that hurts your punting <laughs> average quite a bit. So our defense has got to rise to the occasion here, and here's their little roll pass. And there's really nobody in the area. He threw it away because they were well covered. A lot of defensive backs back there, you know. Yeah, there really are. And then you can see he has no, no backs in the backfield at all. Mm -hmm. And there's one that was thrown a little short. We occasionally came with a blitz on him. There we had a lot of pressure on him, Todd Gransky, and they completed that pass for, to the 30-yard line. And then they choose to try to go for a field goal, and, and the wind does some funny things to it, too, as you can see, and it's a little short, although he didn't hit it very well at all. Yeah. So we were able to get out of that uh, situation and not give him any points. Here comes a little counter play with Scott Meyer, and he made a really a fine read there. You can get some idea of his quickness. I think that defensive back there had the angle on him or he probably would have had a touchdown. Mm -hmm. But Scott has helped us. We've got our misdirection offense back into our offense. Now we come with a bootleg and we, Gary has quite a bit of time to throw and he lays it in there and Doug Banks comes up with it for a touchdown. We had two guys there and I'm not sure he was throwing to Doug. <laughs> and then we were able to get the PAT there. So Darren's got a string going again. <clears throat> Here's an isolation play that uh, they read very well. Greg Smith is in there now, and we didn't block that play as well. And you can see Wayne, you know, they're fired up. It was a big hit by them, and they're not about to lie down. Here's the fullback dive, but an excellent read, and, a, you know, just a super run by, by Scott Johan. He's really meant a lot to our football program while he's been here. We're going to miss these, these 13 seniors that we have on our squad. Here's the fullback dive again up inside. I believe we might have got the first down on that. And then here's the pitch play, and this is going to be Greg Smith scoring his, his touchdown. Mm -hmm. I think that might have been the first touchdown that he scored since he's been here as, as a varsity player. And here's a, a fumble snap, and it ends up right in Darren, Darren Gauerholtz's hands, and he did the only thing he could do was to try <laughs> to run for it. It was a little high, and it went through Russ Harvey's hands. Now Wayne came out and he started to run the ball. And there was a big okay. initial hit by John Rose, number 32, and then one of his teammates kind of knocked him off of the mm -hmm. tackle, and the young man from Wayne kept going and ended up with the first down. 
Again, you can see now there's no backs in the backfield, and they're going to throw it again. And it's intercepted by Kevin Lyons, and he returns it for a touchdown. So that's a big play for Kevin. Kevin is another senior from Gibbon, Nebraska, and he's meant a lot to our, our football team. He's, he's been a good example of what hard work will do. And we're certainly going to, you know, as I said earlier, miss these young men that have been a part of our squad for four or five years. And that's the end of the ball game. And there's no doubt after a win like that, you have to be pleased. Bill's momentum for the last game. This is definitely a big game coming up for no you. No question about it, John. We're going to need all the momentum we can get. Might ask you before this break, you've had an incredible lucky streak, or I don't know if you want to call it luck, but Wayne just can't touch you. Well, you know, it's just been one of those that even some years that they've played us extremely tough.